Commentary right now on TalkSport for Leicester, West Ham with former Chelsea Cup winner Scott Minto alongside TalkSport's chief football commentator Sam Matapace. Thank you Adrian. Afternoon everybody. Strap yourselves in. After 370 exhilarating games for Leeds or Everton or Leicester, this is it. It all ends here. Leicester will be relegated in the next 90 minutes if they fail to win. Everton will be safe if they are victorious. It's a simple equation. If Leicester win, they need Everton not to. It's a day when the calculators can have a rest. There's a flag flying in front of me, flapping in the wind. Etched on the face of a fox, it says, bring the fight. Not quite the noise that has greeted the team that survived in 2015. The FA Cup winning strike from Yuri Tielemans or the moment that Andrea Bocelli sang Ness and Dorma to the inexplicable, unimaginable champions. It's a bit more apprehensive than that. The legend of Leicester, the team that gave the rest of football the dream, needs one more jaw-dropping twist. If Dwight McNeil, the Everton forward, is true to his word that he can be the Toffees Michael Jordan, then this will be Leicester's last dance. West Ham have silverware in their sights for them. This is the game before the game, and Leicester will hope that they're distracted as a result of that. Maybe the man of the hour will be Dean Smith. He got a point against West Ham in July 2020 to save Aston Villa, but he knows that a point will not be enough tonight. Let's go through the two teams, starting with Leicester City. They made three changes from the defensive draw at Newcastle. Everson is their goalkeeper. Castagna, Evans and Fass and Thomas, the back four. Tielemans, Dewsbury Hall and Samare. Barnes and Madison and then Ahia Nacho. They're all in blue with big gold trim. It's a new kit for Leicester today. Their new season kit for next season. Where will they be wearing it? James Madison walks over to the supporters on the far side, gives them a big clap, asks them for more cheers. Fabianski is the West Ham goalkeeper. The rest of the West Ham outfield players in claret shirts, blue shorts, Sofau, Kerra, Aguerd and Cresswell, Downs and Rice, Benrahma, Paqueta, Fornaus and Antonio making up a strong looking team. Our referee is Simon Hooper. Tomorrow we've got the League One playoff final for you. The Europa League final to come with Sevilla going for yet another triumph against Jose Mourinho's team. All the football, all the time, right here on Talk Sport. The players take the knee to remind everybody that they want social justice and equality. And we're often underway on the final day of the Premier League season. Scott Minto, FA Cup winner and the man who suffered relegation to Leicester and Leeds can seek solace in the knowledge that there are nine previous instances of teams starting the final day in the relegation zone and avoiding the drop. What can you see happening here? Well, do you know what, Sam? I, I've said that I think Everton being in the position they're in, can they really give it away? I'm, I'm wavering now. I'm not 100% sure. Leicester quite simply have to do the job here. But as I said before, if they get that early goal, then there's every chance that will seep through to uh, Goodison Park and that will put pressure on Everton players that haven't been able to deal with the pressure this season. The atmosphere here is nothing short of incredible. So the players need to live up to that. Just remember, on a day like this, the internet is fast, but it's not as fast as talk sports. So when the goals go in, you'll hear them first right here. Here is Ahia Nacho coming forward down the left in the Leicester City blue. He centres the ball, but it's not a great pass into Barnes, who's coming in off the left flank and into the channel. But it was defended well by Tilo Kerra, and it's out on this near side. Leicester have got it deep inside their own territory. A minute played on talk sport, where it's nil-nil. And remember, we'll be round the ground as soon as anything changes up and down the country in the Premier League. So foul clears from the right fullback position, high up in the air, travels out towards this near touchline. And Pablo Fornals, who started four of the last five games and scored that very important goal at RZ away from home, just sees the ball out on this near side. Leicester City with the early domination of uh, possession. Leicester may be able to take inspiration from their women's side, who pulled off their own great escape yesterday. They started 2023 on zero points and survived by five points. They got 16 in the end. A brilliant job by Willie Kirk. Dean Smith hoping that his side end up having a similar sort of turnaround, although it would be a slightly quicker turnaround that's required. Here's Samare just short of halfway. Out wide towards Castagna. 
plays it infield. Samare's driven ball goes through to Dewsbury Hall, but he's immediately dispossessed by Fornaus, who rushes the ball up to Antonio, holds it up well, plays it to his left. Paqueta skips away from Samare, and now Leicester on the back foot as West Ham come forward down the far side. Ben Rama jinks in towards the edge of the penalty area, runs at Castagno, puts it out in the way for the first corner of the game. Here's Scott Minto. Yeah, well played, good defender from Castagno. The last thing they can do, afford to do, Leicester, is give away this early goal. And but once Ben Rama's got in the box as a fullback, you're always worried about making a tackle, but it was a very well timed one. This is Talk Sport. First corner of the game goes West Ham's way. Remember, Leicester have to win and make sure uh, that they get a little bit of luck from Goodison Park. Bournemouth have to get something from that game. The ball's whipped in towards the near post. It's flicked on. Leeds trying to get out of relegation dodge as well, but they need Leicester and Everton to lose in order to do that. The ball's loose inside the uh, West Ham half after the... Uh, corner was cleared out towards the far side and it's picked up by Ben Rama there's already been a goal at Ellen Road let's get to Mark Wilson it's Leeds nil Spurs one Harry Kane on the right spot ball played in by Son edge of the area and Sam Allardyce playing six defenders is not working inside two minutes for the sixth successive season Harry Kane scores on the final day it's Leeds nil Spurs one 29th goal of the season for Harry Kane he's one short now of equaling his best Premier League goals return in a single season Spurs who haven't won a match outside London since October in front and that's dreadful for Leeds United who will be relegated from the top flight for the seventh time should they be defeated today he couldn't be more defensive either by the sounds of it could he Big Sam uh, we looked at the team earlier on and we just basically thought they were playing seven defensive players really in that team a back five and two holding midfield players here on the right hand side the ball has been picked up by Fornals played centrally into Paqueta Paqueta coming forward for West Ham United 0-0 the score four minutes in the way things are at this moment in time it's Everton who are surviving in the Premier League here's Paqueta over towards the far side Rice back to Ben Rama could be the last appearance in the Premier League for West Ham captain Declan Rice today James Madison could be making his last appearance in Leicester Blue and he's floated the ball forward beautifully for Barnes to chase Fabianski's had to come out of his area to clear it he does he's retrieved by Dewsbury Hall and Leicester have got it back again it's the kind of ball that only Madison can play and they're almost in Scott Minter. yeah and I think Lucas Fabianski he just should have stayed in in his uh, his own box and if he had done that he could have caught it which I think shows exactly how much they've got them a little bit nervous uh, with these West Ham players and certainly the West Ham goalkeeper as well because of this atmosphere Leeds trail at home to Tottenham by a goal to nil Harry Kane with the goal and that live commentary continues over on TalkSport 2 with Ian Danter and Perry Groves the worst possible start for Leeds United they Leicester and Everton all fighting against relegation and if that scoreline stays the same Leicester will think well hold on there's only one more to ensure that we have to jump in order to get there they're, they're ahead of Leeds at the moment in the table and uh, that result just sort of knocks Leeds further down the pecking order and provides the impetus for Leicester to go and attack this game a victory for them at this moment in time if they were to score now they'd jump out the relegation zone and above Everton here's Antonio inside the centre circle plays it out towards the right hand side Thomas manages to clear it it's collected by Harvey Barnes and then all the way back to the edge of the 18 yard box and Johnny Evans has only just come back really from a long long injury just at the right time really for Leicester but it might be a little bit too late just miscontrolled it and then plays it to Mount Fass opening stages have been uh, relatively comfortable so far six minutes gone no panics just yet for, Lee, uh, for Leicester City ball square out towards Mount Fass again he travels up down the right side of the pitch it's the halfway it's now on to Samare into Madison Madison trying to turn pokes it on looking for the run from midfield for Kalichi Ahianaccio to break the lines and get into the box didn't quite work its way to him again puts it out on the far side it's a Leicester City throw yeah I think he was just trying to force it there where it wasn't quite on Harvey Barnes was a, a longer ball but the, I think the better option there but it just goes to show we wonder whether how nervous they would be I'll tell you what they've started pretty well on the ball Talk sport, 0-0 in every single game apart from that Leeds United Tottenham game. The ball is over on the right with Kalecia here, Nacho. For Leicester City on the attack, needing to win to save themselves. 
Infield it goes. Dewsbury Hall a little bit rushed. Sends it down the right side. He's had a bit of an ankle injury. Keenan and Dewsbury Hall. He wasn't really in favour with Dean Smith when the new manager took over. Then had his ankle problem. He only started one of seven before today. And he started 26 of 29 before that. There's such a balance between wanting to be really positive and get the ball forward and having that composure and, and playing the ball on. We just saw Ian Acho give the ball away. Dewsbury Hall has, has overplayed a pass there. Just in that real important moment, have that cold composure where they need to do if they are going to get that goal. Barnes, infield to Dewsbury Hall, but it's cut out by so foul. And then Tielemans, without any composure, just volleyed the ball forward out towards this near side. And we can go off to a goal at Villa Park. Could be a crucial one, Jeff Peters. Aston Villa 1, Brighton 0. Douglas Louise with his sixth Premier League goal of the season. He steered it in. If Villa win this, then they are in Europe next season. Villa 1, Brighton 0. Yeah, Villa haven't played in Europe for 13 years, but they will finish seventh and qualify for the Conference League with a victory. And they're leading by a goal to nil. There's commentary of that game on the TalkSport app. They're beating Brighton. Here it's still nil-nil. Eight minutes gone on TalkSport on the final day of the Premier League season. Dramatic final day of the Premier League season. It's a dusty summer haze lurking over the King Power Stadium, which hopes to be hosting Premier League football next season. But that is no longer certain. Here is Ben Rama for West Ham, motoring up towards the midpoint of the Leicester half. Leicester falling back into shape, two banks of four, trying to prevent West Ham from finding a way through. He goes out towards the far side, Cresswell, who has played more Premier League games than any other West Ham player than Mark Noble. Is that right? Oh. Good stat. Ball <laughs> clip forward by Rice. Out towards the uh, right wing position, headed away by Luke Thomas. And travelling forward was Harvey Barnes. He's stopped by Pablo Fornals, and the ball goes out towards this near side. Goal at Stamford Bridge on Talksport. Let's go to Jake Robson. Chelsea nil, Newcastle 1 9 on the clock. Anthony Gordon into the side. Well placed he was in the centre of the box. Good work by Anderson down the left. His cross and almost a scuffed shot went underneath Kepper. He got a palm to it, but it's ended up in the back of the net. Chelsea nil, Newcastle 1. Gordon's first goal in Newcastle colours will be playing Champions League football for the first time uh, since 2003. What's happening at Goodison Park? What the early stage is looking like? Matt Jones. Nine minutes gone. It's still Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. Both teams still feeling their way into this one and just the one chance so far Jefferson Lerber stabbing over from the near the edge of the area Everton haven't really offered much at the other end as of yet but plenty of time to go Everton nil Bournemouth nil listen to talk sport this is what the table looks like at this moment in time Southampton already relegated 25 points from 38 leads 31 from 38 Leicester 32 from 38 Everton 34 from 38 staying in the Premier League as it stands here is Kin and Dewsbury Hall for Leicester City into Barnes. Barnes travelling back towards Thomas and then infield to Tielemans. Whip round the corner. Space here for Dewsbury Hall, who's looking to engage with Tilo Kedda, who does very well actually to take the ball towards the byline. And then Dewsbury Hall, just a little bit too eager to get involved there, stopped him from giving away a corner. And now the break is on for West Ham United. And Paqueta has found Ben Rama, who's travelling at speed down the left hand side, jinking in onto his right foot. There's space on the edge of the area for Declan Rice. Rice was threatening to shoot instead he went wide to four nows he plays the ball straight into the body of Luke Thomas and then it comes out towards the near side picked up by four nows again a low ball in towards the near post it's flicked away by Fass and will go on to St Mary's where there's been a goal for Alex Crook Southampton nil Liverpool won an absolute howler from Romeo Lavia gave the ball away inside his own penalty area passed it straight to Diogo Jota and he calmly tucked beyond McCarthy into the far corner Southampton nil Liverpool won Six dollars season for Diogo Jota. Goal at the Emirates as well. Alfie Reynolds. Ten minutes gone and it's a goal for Arsenal. Arsenal one, Wolves nil. Granite Xhaka heading in Jesus's chipped cross from the right. Could that be Xhaka's final goal for the club? He's rumoured to be moving away this summer. He has just enjoyed the applause all around the Emirates. Ten gone, Arsenal one, Wolves nil. Yeah, rumoured to be leaving at the end of the campaign. What's his name again, Scott? Was it Granite what? <laughs> Your bad kid, you as well. Ball is out on the near side. Pot and kettle, Sam, that's all I say. Pot and kettle. <laughs> so foul. Throwing the ball into uh, Tilo Kerra. 
And there was just a brief moment there where Leicester City just gave the ball away deep inside West Ham territory and West Ham showed their counter-attacking ability and they've got to be careful of that. No, they did. Both teams have given the ball away. You talked about Cresswell and his experience in the Premier League. Well, he gave it away a, a really bad pass that Leicester nearly got on the end of and, and Leicester have done the same as well. So, but you've got two teams here wanting a result for very different reasons, but just feel the one that has the composure in the final third are the ones that are going to open up the, the opposition defence. Arsenal 1, Wolves 0. Aston Villa 1, Brighton 0. 0-0 nil, nil Brentford, Manchester City. Chelsea 0, Newcastle 1. Palace 0, Forest 0. Everton 0, Bournemouth 0. Leeds 0, Tottenham 1. Leicester 0, West Ham 0. Manchester City, United 0, Fulham 0. And Southampton 0, Liverpool 1. Ball given away by Dewsbury Hall on the right side. For now, has it. So foul in the right wing position, trying to progress forward. They play it against Luke Thomas, who comes out, shuts the game down, and it goes off and away for a throw in out on this near side for West Ham. We now travel forward with Paqueta, who's sizing up a shot from distance. Didn't catch it at all well, and Danny Everson just allows that to go behind his left hand upright, and it's out and away for a goal kick away to our right hand side. Need to be careful though with Paqueta, he's really come on in the, the latter half of the season hasn't he, and, and looking a strong player, just as really he wanted to play as a number eight for West Ham, David Moyes I think you know, realises he's better a little bit further up, so he's been playing as a number ten, he's been scoring, making assists, he's already shown these class and little bits of skill in tight situations, you don't want him on his left foot 20 yards out because uh, he will hit the target. Early on today, Carlisle won the League 2 playoff final against Stockport on penalties. 5-4, the League 1 playoff is tomorrow live on Talk Sport. And uh, Dundee United are going down from the Scottish Premier League. Here come uh, Leicester City, determined not to go down from the English Premier League. Infield, they go to Barnes, and then it's a bit of a missed kick. Comes back to a Nacho, and then he scuffed his shot after a bit of pinball wizard inside the West Ham penalty area. A real mistake from Sofal, who almost seemed to pass it back into a congested penalty box. And then when Kalecia Hianaccio pulled the trigger, he didn't catch it at all well. We'll get Scott Minto's thoughts on that after we've got goal news from the Emirates. Alfie Reynolds. Arsenal 2, Wolves 0 and a second goal of the game for Granit Xhaka who hugs the technical area of that Arsenal support. It might be his last game, if it is, what a way to bow out. Arsenal 2, Wolves 0. And a goal of St Mary's for Alex Crook. And a popular one, Southampton 0, Liverpool 2, wouldn't you know it, Bobby Firmino on his farewell appearance. He skipped his way past pretty much the entire Southampton back line and then he's fired the ball low into the bottom corner. It Southampton nil, Liverpool 2. Another big chance back here for a Nacho. We'll get Scott Minto's thoughts on that in just a second. Pacatar plays the ball left. There's loads of space for Antonio. The defence is misshapen. Antonio flips it towards the far corner, saved by Everson and parried away. And that was just a little bit too open. Here is Shrewsbury Hall picking it up in the middle of the park. Well, there's an offside flag that's gone up after Nacho came back from an offside position. But Scott, two great opportunities for Nacho in quick succession. Yeah, you know, he's going really end to end now. And I'll tell you what, it was a really good crossfield ball and Aged couldn't quite get on the end of it. He managed to sort it out in the end, but there's Leicester certainly looking for that ball in behind. Again, you can't force it. If it's not quite on, then just keep playing and work your way up the pitch. But sometimes it is on with the pace of Ian Atcher. Then down the other end, West Ham counter. And I actually think Mikel Antonio should have done better there. 13th goal of the season, by the way, for Bobby Firmino. And there's commentary of that Southampton-Liverpool game uh, over on the TalkSport app. Download it, you can flip between TalkSport, TalkSport 2, where we've got Leeds United against Tottenham Hotspur. Leeds trailing by a goal to nil. And we've got the Aston Villa game on the TalkSport app as well. Uh, Jeff Peters is there for us here, and they're leading by a goal to nil. So they're going to the Conference League as things stand. Here is Declan Rice in midfield. Oh, he gets crunched by Samare. And that's the last thing that West Ham fans want to see 10 days out from the Conference League final. Absolutely. And you know, someone like Declan Rice won't go down unless he is hurt. He's, he's sitting up, so I think he's going to be OK. But that is naughty. That is painful. And he's come in there. I well, think he's come he's, in studs up he's, yeah. on the ankle and, and above. And he's, he's kind of caught the back of his, his heel, really. And, and he's got away with that one, but doesn't mean to say it's not a dangerous tackle. That was naughty from Samare. And late. Here is Pacatar playing the ball in field. I'm going to follow your lead on that, Pacatar, because that's the Brazilian pronunciation, the Portuguese pronunciation. Is that right? No, fala Portuguese, Raul. You live no, there. No, you no, should no. know. All right, OK. I'll do the translating. 
Here is uh, Flynn Downs scruffing around with Madison in the centre of the field. Loses the ball, gives away a free kick and Leicester have it back again. Remember the relegation situation today is pretty simple. If Everton win, they're safe. If they drop points, Leicester can nick above them with a win. Leeds will stay up only if they win and the other two, Everton and Leicester, lose. But Leeds are trailing at this moment in time. Madison travelling out towards the near touchline. Thomas down the left looking for Dewsbury Hall. Tilo Kerra will come across and kick clear from the right fullback position. And uh, it's out and away on this near side. I'd like to see James Madison get a little bit more involved. You can see him coming off that, that right hand side because he's not receiving the ball, more towards central. But you know, you know the quality he's got. He's not a winger, he's more of a number 10, so he just needs to try and find a way of getting on the ball. Yeah, also does leave a little bit of a gap in that area when they're defending. Here is Barnes back to Samare. Now onto Tielem and encouraged to shoot, and he does shoot from a good 24 yards out from goal, but it's over the top of the crossbar, left footed. It was not as accurate, precise, or as deadly as the goal he scored to win them the FA Cup a couple of seasons back. Good work from Dewsbury Hall on this near side, though, forcing the issue a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know, Leicester are giving it a rule. They're, they're really working hard, but I think you can see that mentally they are, you know, lacking in confidence because, again, I use that word composure. When you're playing with confidence, it's there. You play naturally. And at the moment, they're forcing things. Tielemans just leaning back with that shot. Here is Barnes running through the centre of the West Ham half, getting it onto his right foot, moving to the right apex of the penalty area. Madison takes over now. West Ham with lots of men behind the ball. They found Samare far side. Back into Madison again. He flips the ball into the box, looking for a Hianacho. Away by Kerra. Chested down by Ben Rama and smacked clear by Cresswell. And then held up well by Antonio, who causes Vout fast all sorts of problems. He crumples, and it's a free kick on the half way line. That goal for Newcastle, by the way, away at Chelsea, they lead by a goal to nil, means they'll go above Manchester United into third position in the Premier League. Doesn't mean anything at all, apart from the fact that there is uh, a little bit of bragging rights uh, to, uh, to attach to Eddie Howe's team. I wonder if uh, Liverpool are trying to go for the record scoreline down at St Mary's. Alex Crook. Not quite. Southampton 1, Liverpool 2. This could be a farewell goal as well. Carlos Alcaraz, good work on the edge of the area. Rolled the ball into James Ward-Prowse and the captain steers beyond Kelleher to get Saints back in the game. It's Southampton 1, Liverpool 2. Southampton 1, Liverpool 2. Who would have seen that coming? Southampton haven't won since the 4th of March uh, but two of the last three teams that Southampton have beaten at home have been from the North West Blackpool and Manchester City both of them in cup competitions this is Talk Sport Leicester City nil, West Ham United nil. off to Ellen Road in just a second to find out how Leeds have reacted to going a goal down early against Tottenham Hotspur remember Tottenham did take the league last Saturday lunchtime live on Talk Sport against Brentford and ended up losing that game 3-1, here's four nows, edge of the area First time, right-footed shot as the ball's played in from the right channel. Right on the edge of the box, he turned and swiveled and hit that. If he'd caught that right, maybe Danny Everson would have been in trouble. He wasn't, it went wide. It's a decent chance, that. And uh, Leicester couldn't get close to Fornells. He decided to take it first time, and he should have got a better connection. Had no one around him. Could even have brought the ball down, but he's got to be careful of that, Leicester. Have Newcastle angered Manchester United. Mickey Gray. Well, this is not going to plan, Sam. It's Manchester United nil, Fulham one they've just got the goal at the near post on 19 minutes it was a whipped in corner from William and uh, Kenny Tete at the near post just gets ahead of his marker and just nips it in towards the near post and give Davidea absolutely no chance Manchester United nil Fulham one yeah Fulham want to keep their heads sunlight when those two met in the FA Cup quarter final earlier in the season they lead by goal to nil uh, here on the left hand side is Saeed Ben Rama travels to the edge of the box Antonio with an effort you see, he got to the edge of the area there, Antonio. He was coming onto that ball, just couldn't open his body enough to try and get it towards the far corner. But that was another dangerous attack from West Ham United. And the one thing you will say about Leicester, they don't look particularly secure. No, they don't. One clean sheet since the World Cup. I think that says it, everything, doesn't and that it? was Monday night, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, and West Ham are just starting to find little pockets of space as well and getting in behind. Difficult to try and score first time from that way. So in that sense, you can say Leicester... Uh, defended semi well but West Ham just more and more coming into the game now. Nil nil here at the King Power Stadium. Elsewhere it looks like this. Arsenal 2-0 up against Wolves. Doesn't really mean too much. Aston Villa going to the Conference League. They're leading against Brighton by a goal to nil. Brentford nil. The champions Manchester City nil. Newcastle looking to cement third position. They're leading at Chelsea by a goal to nil. Palace Forest is nil nil. Everton against Bournemouth is nil nil. 
and uh, Manchester United behind against Fulham and Southampton 2-1 behind at home to Liverpool. What's happen happening at Ellen Road? Talk Sports, Mark Wilson. Still leads nil, Spurs 1, Harry Kane with a goal inside two minutes but Leeds had a guilt edge opportunity on six minutes. Rodrigo with a cross from the right hand side, Robin Cock ten yards out, unmarked. He somehow put his header wide of the far post. Spurs look really poor at the back but Leeds just can't take advantage. Uh, 20 gone here, Leeds nil, Spurs 1. Any sign of an opener at Goodison Park? Matt Jones? Not yet, no. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil, 21 minutes on the clock. Everton have had a chance. Damari Gray, the ball fell to him from a corner at the edge of the area, but he hammered it over the bar. The Blues are playing with a back five at the moment, which is maybe inhibiting them getting forward, but they do look reasonably solid at the back. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. You know, it's a bloke down on the uh, front row of the stand that we're sitting in. The camera is just focused on him. He's got a talk sport radio and it's slammed right to his ear. He's listening to everything. Don't worry, we'll keep you update, mate. Don't worry, we'll keep you across everything. At 22 gone, you're listening to Talk Sport. Nil-nil is the score. It's out towards the far side. Uh, we were looking at that team. Matt Jones talking about the fact there hasn't been too much of a sign of a goal in that game. Well, I'm not too surprised, are no, you? No, absolutely not. And, you know, <laughs> you're two teams that really could do with a positive result. And, and both those team selections, I think, um, were pretty defensive. Out on the left-hand side, the ball is played towards uh, Aaron Cresswell. But the offside flag is up on this near touchline. And... Uh, Adrian Holmes, who is the assistant on this near side, very quick and smart with his flag, and Leicester have the ball back once again. Nil-nil. Haven't had too many chances in this game either, only half chances so far in it. And Leicester City, who I think will be quite happy with it like this, is not at the moment too nerve-wracking for them, but they're, they're in the game, which is the most important thing. Yeah, look, I, I do think they would have loved to have got that goal in the first 15 minutes again, put the pressure on Everton, because all the while it stays stays nil-nil there. Everyone will know just one goal here and that suddenly changes things. So they've done OK in midfield. They've worked hard. Again, I talk about that composure in terms of opening up that final pass. James Madison sometimes is coming off the wing and trying to play in Iniacho, but West Ham defending very well at the moment. Well, form is not with either of these two sides, really. Leicester have won only twice here since late October and West Ham have only won two of the last 16 Premier League away games since September. And the Opta supercomputer at the start of the day gave Leicester an 82.7% chance of relegation. Leeds was 96.9. Everton's just 20.4. Here is Dewsbury Hall coming forward for Leicester on this left-hand side. Luke I'd Thomas have put, I'd put those two a lot closer, by the way. <laughs> Everton's higher and, and Leicester's lower. Would you? Yes, I, I do. I think it's going to be really tight to see what happens at Goodison. Leicester have to concentrate. Your mate at the front row. He needs to watch the game because they it, need to score a goal. Tielemans onto it here. Nacho looking to spin. Back heel to Barnes. Right-footed shot. No power in it. Great move from Leicester. Right through the middle of the pitch. Some delicate touches are here. Nacho did well to set it back for Barnes. And when it came through to Harvey Barnes, he just needed a little bit more venom in that strike from the edge of the penalty yeah, area. Yeah, he did. He needed to really come onto it. He was he's kind of already there and therefore had to generate the power. But that's what I'm talking about. Rather than just long balls, play the ball in 10, 15 yard passes. Really good uh, wall play for me and Achu there. Taking that touch, looking up and laying it off. Ben Rama coming centrally now, plays the ball out wide for Nows, looks up, he's moving towards the right edge of the Leicester penalty area, West Ham on the attack, there's not much happening in midfield, it's all sort of end-to-end -end stuff, isn't it? You attack, then we attack. There's no protection there at all, there is isn't there? No, it's quite scary, really. Uh, ball out over on the left-hand side, especially if you're a Leicester City fan. Nows are going to be bitten to the quick by the time we get to the end of this game. And you said it was tight. It is already very it is, tight. You know, both teams nil-nil. Leicester here and Everton at home against Bournemouth. I think the Leicester fans are already used to all season. Them, uh, they're back for not having too much protection. Yeah, well, I mean, some of the games have been rather horrific defensively. But it is tight. It is tight. We know that West Ham, look, you know, they're, they're turning up. They're trying to play, but they don't have that extra edge that the Leicester do. So... Leicester need to try and capitalise on that. Yes, of course, we're 25 minutes in. There's no goal so far, but it's been a positive start from the, the home side. It, again, just that one, one word, composure. Ben Rama picks it up for West Ham. He's on the edge of the centre circle, then moves towards the edge of the box. Right-footed shot, cannons off Johnny Evans, comes back out wide towards the right. So foul with a low cross into the area, turned away by Fast. And then it's out on this near side. But it's far too easy for Ben Rama to travel from the edge of the centre circle to the edge of the D 
and then play a pass which is unchallenged. And, and Soufal, he's, he's making the overlap as well. He's, he's, he's not quite in the box, but he's in line with the box and no one's making that challenge. He plays it inside. It's a really good ball. And Fast does well defending it on his left foot. This is Talk Sport on the final day of the Premier League season. The scores are like this. Arsenal leading 2-0, but there's been another goal at Villa Park. Jeff Peters. It's Aston Villa 2, Brighton 0. Ollie Watkins with a tap-in, ending his goal drought. I think they're going to have a look at a challenge where Brighton gave the ball away. Brighton have actually had a goal disallowed themselves, but as it stands, it's Villa 2, Brighton 0. We'll confirm that goal for you in just a second. There has been another goal at Stamford Bridge. Talk sports, Jake Robson. 27 on the clock. It's Chelsea 1, Newcastle 1. It's come via a well-worked free kick that's seen Raheem Sterling pick up the ball on the edge of the area. He's fired in the cross, and I think it's come off Kieran Trippier. The Tannoy man gave it to Sterling, but no doubt about it. Come off the Newcastle defender. It's an own goal, so it's Chelsea 1, Newcastle 1. What a chance for Raheem Nacho. He's hit the top of the crossbar, set up by Madison, laid back to him, and he curled the ball left-footed towards the far corner and it hit the top of the crossbar what a chance for Leicester yeah really good play from Leicester there the crossfield pass and then the ball came in Inacho does so well to bring it down at the far post plays a little one two with James Madison and on his left foot you're thinking you just hit the target does the hard bit bringing it down oh that's literally inches above keepers beaten absolutely beaten goal at the Emirates Alfie Reynolds 26 minutes gone, Arsenal 3, Wolves 0, Bakayo Saka with his 14th goal in the Premier League this season. Superb season for the Arsenal man who recently signed a new contract. Wolves look all at sea. Arsenal 3, Wolves 0. Let's go to St Mary's, a quick goal from Alex Crook. Southampton 2, Liverpool 2, Camaldine Sulemana with his first Premier League goal. This time Liverpool caught playing their way out from the back. Walcott with a pass, Sulemana with a low finish. Southampton 2, Liverpool 2. Back here it's 0-0, Leicester on the attack with Barnes down in the left wing position, trying to jink past Sofa, moves in towards the penalty area, tries to play it back, and can't quite get there and it's cleared away by Fornells who's helping out. It then falls towards uh, Dewsbury Hall, Paqueta has it now, travels centrally and Madison won the ball back, no one reacted, they wanted a foul and Leicester stopped for a second but they've won it back now, moved down the left, it's Barnes into the centre, Dewsbury Hall over the top of the crossbar. Wow, and the crowd here are really getting behind the team because the team are giving the crowd really good performance in the last few minutes. They win the ball back. I don't think it was a foul in the first place on Pakate. It wasn't. It was a perfectly timed challenge from James Madison. He's already in the middle. The ball goes out to Harvey Barnes. He plays the ball inside. And Jewsbury Hall has to hit the target. It's not the easiest strikes first time, but you have to hit the target. This is Talk Sport. We're live at the King Power Stadium. And we've played half an hour, and it's less than nil, West Ham nil. But Jewsbury Hall and Kalecia Hianacho have had a couple of really good chances in this game. And they've hit the crossbar. Here's Antonio down the right-hand side for West Ham United, who uh, themselves have had one or two good opportunities. Antonio into the centre. Fast dabs it. Madison's back inside his own box helping the ball forward and he's found a Nacho on halfway. I'll tell you what, when I saw a Nacho limp off the pitch at Ellen Road after setting up a Jamie Vardy goal earlier in the season, I didn't think we'd see him again this campaign. But he's here and he's making a big contribution. Absolutely, and that's why he's starting the game, isn't it? Jamie Vardy on the bench, ready to come on if need be for the last 20 or so minutes. But Nacho. He's been, uh, he's using his, he's actually kind of dropping off. He's not playing as a typical number nine. But when he does play up there, he adds that threat in behind, but he also drops off and plays in the midfield. So it's really good play from him at the moment. We'll go around the grounds in just a second and give you an update on all the scores in just a moment. But Leicester are on the attack here with Samare just right at the centre circle. Half an hour gone in the game as it stands. Everton staying in the Premier League and Leicester are going down. They need a goal from somewhere they don't necessarily need it now but at some point they're going to need a goal no they don't need it now and the way they're playing at the moment as I say just in the last five or so minutes you, you get the feeling momentum is with them and when you've got momentum you've got to take advantage of it Madison picks the ball up right apex of the penalty here clips the ball to the far post almost snuck through to Barnes headed away by Sofal and then out comes Fabianski and catches the ball at its highest point and clears it away Arsenal lead by three goals to nil Aston Villa are 2-0 up against Brighton there's commentary on the app if you want to listen to that they're going to the European uh, Conference League Brentford nil Manchester City nil Chelsea 1 Newcastle 1 Palace nil Forest nil Everton nil Bournemouth nil Everton staying up at present Leeds nil Tottenham 1 Leeds going down Leicester nil 
West Ham nil, Leicester going down. Manchester United nil, Fulham one. Manchester United dropping to fourth place at this moment in time. And it's Southampton two, Liverpool two. West Ham have the ball on the halfway line with Declan Rice, the captain. He travels just to the left of the centre circle, goes back to Flynn down. So we'll go off to Goodison Park. What's the latest from Matt Jones? And it's still Everton nil, Bournemouth nil with 31 minutes gone. But Everton have just had the first shot on target, the best chance yet as Gay was slipped into the area. Had a go from about 18 yards, but a fingertip save from Travers tipped the ball over the bar. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. Back here it's still nil nil at the King Power Stadium in the Premier League, live on Talk Sport. And Madison, who's getting on the ball with more regularity now, is starting to pull the strings in this game. He sends the ball down the left towards Thomas. Thomas sending it for Ahia Nacho to chase. And he had a little nudge in the back of Tilo Kerra. And the free kick is given in West Ham's favour. But you just get the feeling now that there is a little bit of uh, favour going in uh, Leicester's direction. We'll ask Scott Minto about that in just a second. But first of all, off to Selhurst Park. Uh, there's been a goal for Talk Sports, Oli Klink. Half an hour gone, Crystal Palace nil, Nottingham Forest won against the run of play, but it's Taiwo Awanyi who's given Forest the lead, lovely feet after a through ball inside the box, and he smashed the finish past the keeper. Forest ahead, half an hour gone, Crystal Palace nil, Nottingham Forest won. And any Tricky Trees fans might want to follow that uh, live on the TalkSport app. We've got commentary for you right now. Crystal Palace nil, Nottingham Forest 1 and Taiwo Wanyu becomes the first player to score in four successive Forest Premier League matches since Stan Collymore in the 90s. Congratulations to Awanyi. Scott, what have you made of the way that this game has sort of gone in Leicester's favour in the last few minutes? Is it all to do with Madison getting more touches? Yeah, absolutely. I was saying earlier he needs to come off the wing a lot more. He's doing it again now. He's on the ball. You know, the class that he's got. First of all, if I'm a fullback, I'm saying, yeah, I want to play against you out on the wing because you're not going to beat me in behind. But as a midfielder, he just makes things tick and Leicester very much on top at the moment. Here's Barnes moving towards the edge of the box, plays it to here. Nacho gets the ball back down the left channel. It's Harvey Barnes for Leicester City into the far corner to put them in front. And Leicester City score a massive goal. Harvey Barnes was left out last Monday, but he's back in the team with a bang today. And Leicester City have hope. They lead. And if the scoreline stays like this, they'll be staying in the Premier League. The chairman gets out of his seat, high fives every supporter in front of him because he knows just how big that Barnes goal could be. Leicester lead by a goal to nil. Stop me, Toe. Absolutely brilliant play from Harvey Barnes there. Coming in off the left, playing a 1 2 with Ian Acho. Again, that wall pass, that number nine when he's playing there, keeping the ball or just playing it first time. He played it first time there. Harvey Barnes used his pace to get in behind Soufal. And then we talked about composure. Had that composure, just to side foot it into the far post. And that was a wonderful finish there. And it was so important for Leicester City to get that first goal. It will start seeping through Sam to Goodison Park. It certainly will, because that goal means, as it stands right now, Leicester are staying in the Premier League. They jump up above Everton into 17th position. 34 points from 38 games. But crucially, they have a much better goal difference than Everton. And that goal could be the one that saves Leicester City. How has that news gone down at Goodison Park? Matt Jones. Well, the atmosphere is still quite flat here. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. The uh, Blues have been getting better and having more chances. Gay has seen another from distance save, but the crowd will surely have to react and try and lift their players at some point because they know now that they need a goal if they're going to stay safe. It's Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. Well, Dean Smith pulled it out of the bag once upon a time with Aston Villa. Can he do it again with Leicester City? They lead here by a goal to nil. That goal scored by Harvey Barnes. Their top scorer, the man who maybe, if Leicester were to go down, would be playing his last game for the club. There think, would be takers. I think there's a few that would be playing the last game for the club if that was the case, but Harvey Barnes would be one of them. Look, Leicester deserve to be one up. They've been the better side. It was quite even in the first 15 or so minutes, but they've just stepped it up. They've created a couple of chances, very much on top. Dewsbury Hall, down the left side, a little back heel and he plays it sentry, Samare onto Madison, Madison edge of the box, right footed shot, narrowly wide of the right hand upright. Look, Everton have played in the top flight of English football for the last 69 successive seasons. It's a massive story if they go down, but it's also huge for this club. 
formerly champions of England. In fact, much more recently than Everton have been champions of England. FA Cup winners, Champions League competitors, Europa League campaigners. They're surprised that they're in this situation, which is probably one of the reasons why they are in this situation. But if they win here and Everton don't win at Goodison Park, they will stay up and they are winning here. Well, listen, whether if they stay up, they'll have gotten away with it because there's three worst teams in them. And ultimately, I suppose that's what you have to do. But it's, even if they do stay up, it's been a, a shocking season. But it's all about today, the here and now. And they have stepped it up when they need to do so far. But you do get the feeling, Sam, there's going to be a lot more twists and turns until the end of the game. Yeah, don't go anywhere because it's not over yet. The score is Leicester 1. West Ham nil on TalkSport with Now Sports. And don't forget, with Now Sports, you can stream all the Sky Sports action, like Leicester versus West Ham, Everton versus Bournemouth, live right now for 11 99 No contract search, Now Sports. Here, here Nacho pokes it through to Madison. Madison's on the edge of the penalty area. He's surrounded by three claret and blue shirts. He shoots towards goal. It takes a deflection, goes into the air, goes behind, and it's out and away for a corner kick. Well, James Madison's running the show at the moment and, and closely followed by Ian Acho as well. Very clever between the two. Ian Acho just dropped off there and it was James Madison running in behind. Not the quickest, but he used a bit of skill. And in the end, it was good defending from West Ham. Corner kick to be taken by Yuri Tielemans the way to our left-hand side. Leeds are losing at home against Tottenham. Everton drawing 0-0 with Bournemouth. And Leicester winning here means Leicester, at this moment in time, are staying in the Premier League. Hold on to your seat. It's not going to be a very comfortable seat for the next few hours, I wouldn't have thought. Here is Tielemans, plays a 1-2 with Barnes and sends it into the congested West Ham penalty area. As Leicester go on the attack again. It's over on the right side with Kelechi Nacho. He's tied to the touchline, comes back in field, gives it to Luke Thomas. Thomas into Nacho moves forward and plays it square now Tielemans out to Barnes on the near touch line and then it goes back in field to Tielemans once again Harvey Barnes with the goal well now how many Leicester fans would love to just fast forward time right now 55 minutes of playing time this finish like this and it stays like this there will be one hell of a party I think in Leicester tonight I think beforehand a few of the Leicester fans were suggesting that maybe they won't even if they stay up they'll still be a little bit you know downbeat because of what's happened over the course of the season I think sheer relief that's will the mean that's the word <laughs> but there's quite a lot of alcohol consumed tonight in Leicester City Centre Tielemans uh, on to Nacho, but that relief is not real just yet there's still a long long way to travel on this Premier League road We've only played 39 minutes. The ball is out wide on the left. It's with Dewsbury Hall of Leicester City. They lead by a goal to nil on Talksport on the final day of the season. And what's that noise all about? What is that noise all about? Oh, I haven't heard anything in my ear. The ball is on the right-hand side. No goals anywhere as far as we're concerned. And the Leicester fans are going balmy. And we've got coverage of the Everton game. There's nothing happening as far as we're concerned. Ball forward by Madison down the left towards Ahia Nacho. It's collected and taken towards the corner flag. Barnes has it now. And then goes centrally into Tielemans. Tielemans plays it down the left in towards Ahia Nacho. Madison tried to get there. It comes up and goes for a goal kick. Quickly, let's go to Matt Jones. Nothing happened, right, Matt? There's definitely not been a goal here. It's uh, Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. Though Bournemouth did come very close. Sanessi just about squeezing a shot out and it went just past the post. Pickford was well beaten. But other than that, there's definitely not been a goal. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. I don't know what happened there, but there was definitely not a goal at Everton. So let's go down to the uh, game at Villa Park where there has been a goal. Uh, let's uh, speak to TalkSport's Jeff Peters. It's Aston Villa 2, Brighton 1. Dennis Undavis scored a sublime goal. Cute headed touch. Wrong footed Mings. Swept it home. Given us offside. Side. VAR said it was onside. It's Villa 2, Brighton 1, some game. Yeah, listen, guys, I told you beforehand, don't worry about your apps. We're faster. We're more accurate than those today. Make sure you're listening to TalkSport. You should be every Saturday anyway. But today, without doubt, you need nothing else. TalkSport, the TalkSport app, get your DAB digital radio, take it with you wherever you go on final days of the season. Trust me, it's the only way to keep up with everything. I noticed your mate at the front row didn't stand up. No, he was listening. He was there. I saw him. 
<laughs> there's been a goal at Old Trafford, Mickey Gray. It's the equaliser, Sam, 39 minutes gone here. Manchester United won, Fulham won. Great play from Fred, a lovely little give and go in the 18-yard box, and it fell kindly to Jaden Sancho, three yards out, just to tap the ball into the back of the net. Manchester United won, Fulham won. Here Nacho goes down, injured over on the far side after a challenge. He's complaining about it. It was uh, Declan Rice who went in, got the ball, and then actually I think it might be a here Nacho and Rice who sort of tangled after the event. Yeah. I don't think there was anything in there. No, really. nothing at all. In fact, Declan Rice, once he made the tackle, tried to almost just stop his, his momentum. But because Ian Nacho had put his foot down, Rice then went into him, which made it painful. But there's no way was that a, a foul. Definitely not the yellow card. Over on TalkSport 2, we've got live commentary with Ian Danter and Perry Groves of Leeds against Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham were leading the last time we were there. What's the latest now, Mark Wilson? Still leading, five to go to the break. Leeds nil, Spurs one. Robin Cox had another free header inside the penalty area, but he's headed it wide, and that really sums up Leeds' problems. He's not scored in 76 appearances for the club, and Leeds are relying on him. At the other end, Kane's had a couple of chances, should have added to his tally already. Leeds nil, Spurs one. Why it stands at this moment in time, Leicester are saving themselves. They're leading here by goal to nil. Everton are not winning in their game against Bournemouth and Leeds, as you've just heard, are trailing against Tottenham Hotspur. But Leicester aren't to be trusted even when they're in front. They've dropped 24 points from winning positions in the Premier League this season, the second most in the Premier League. They have a free kick. It's 15 yards back from the right edge of the area inside West Ham territory. It'll be taken by Yuri Tillemans. There's six blue shirts that have gone up from the back. One of them is Evans at the far post is Barnes, away by Antonio, who heads it clear. Into the left wing position, Johnny Evans travels out there, collects it, plays it square. It's given to Barnes and then it goes back to Sumare. Leicester in possession with two and a half minutes to go before half time on Talk Sport. It's back with Thomas and then into Tielemans. Tielemans across to Thomas once more. He looks up, plays it into the feet of Evans, who travels between four nows and Antonio and is allowed to wander a long way with the ball actually. Hands it off to Tielemans and Leicester allowed to play their football inside West Ham territory here. Dewsbury Hall, Tielemans and then a strong challenge from Pagatar and the ball breaks loose and Tilo Kerra finds Antonio. Antonio is engaged by Sumare. It was a little bit naughty from him again. It's played out to the far side the West Ham left, Cresswell takes over, two minutes before half-time, Leicester 1-0 up, Everton 0-0 with Bournemouth and Leeds 1-0 down to Tottenham. Out wide it goes to Sofal, cross into the near post, headed away by Evans and then Barnes will pick it up and then it'll be cleared by Luke Thomas in the left fullback position, Ahia Nacho going to chase, oh, he misread the flight of the ball, Tilo Kerra, and Ahia Nacho has picked it up and kept hold of it, and he's got support arriving in the shape of Dewsbury Hall, he decides not to use him, waits, plays it down the left now, excellent play by Ahia Nacho, and then Sofau comes back and manages to clear from the right fullback position, and that Leicester attack fades, Scott yeah, Minto. Yeah, just delayed, just delayed too, too much, should have played him in a little bit earlier, Dewsbury Hall, or, or just then just go yourself. And in the end, by the time he played the ball, Sufal got back and made a good tackle. But I have to say, it's been a really good, impressive performance from Leicester. Lovely performance from Leicester so far. Just exactly what their fans wanted on the final day of the season. They're probably asking why these sort of performances that they see away at Newcastle and here today haven't been more apparent over the course of the season. But the way it stands right now, Leicester are saving themselves. They're up into 17th as it stands above Everton, who drop into the relegation zone because they haven't yet managed to score against Bournemouth. It's nil nil there at the top of the table the goals affecting the games in and around the top couple of positions well Manchester United have gone back above Newcastle thanks to their equalising goal Aston Villa are going to the Conference League they're going to finish in seventh because they're leading at home against Brighton the ball's on halfway here Leicester in possession with Samare leading by goal to nil finds Madison. Madison just holding on to the ball he doesn't need to rush it now they've got a one goal lead here keep hold of it keep possession don't put themselves in trouble. We're approaching the 45 minute mark, the fourth official down on the uh, near touchline, just about to indicate how many minutes are added on and Matt Donahue puts one up, Scott uh, Minto. Absolutely, James Madison doing exactly the right thing. You're spot on there, Sam. Just trying to slow it down, realizing right on half time, just the one minute, do not concede. Go in at half time, one the up, and the atmosphere around here when that whistle blows will be amazing. Scores Leicester 1, West Ham 0. On TalkSport with Car Finance 24 7 in your corner throughout your car buying journey. Search Car Finance 24 7 today. Tomorrow, the League One playoff final is live on TalkSport. The Europa League final on Wednesday night, the FA Cup final next Saturday. Laura Woods is back on breakfast on Monday. She'll review everything 
all of the Premier League action tomorrow morning with Ali McCoy from 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Looking forward to it. And over on uh, Virgin Radio this week, Nick Grimshaw is doing the Chris Evans breakfast show from 6.30. That should be uh, fun. Here is uh, Tielemans in field. On to... Uh, Dewsbury Hall wide to Barnes Barnes who scored that vital goal it could be a pivotal goal in Leicester's history that Thomas picks it up infield and there's the half time whistle and it's the perfect first 45 minutes for Leicester City many Leicester fans came into the afternoon resigned to their fate but this is the Premier League and nothing is over until it's over all of a sudden because of a goal from Harvey Barnes and Everton's failure to get in front against Bournemouth the Leicester fans are daring to believe that it's they who will be staying in the Premier League. It's half-time at the King Power Stadium and it's Leicester 1, West Ham United 0. So that will mean Leicester will be safe. Leeds and Everton as it stands are going down. Villa taking the Conference League place. We're waiting for half-time whistles elsewhere. We'll have commentary in the second half of Leicester 1, West Ham United 0. We're into three minutes added on at the end of the first half here at Goodison Park. And Matt Jones and Trevor Sinclair alongside me. Matt, Brentford just went very close again. Yeah, they Sorry, certainly did. Bournemouth, right? Bournemouth, yeah. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil still, but a brilliant tackle by Yerry Mina has just prevented Dominic Solanke from opening the scoring. It was a mistake by Tarkowski, who gave the ball away cheaply. It was then a chance for Brooks to break forward, and he did play in Solanke, but fortunately for Everton, Mina was there, and Mina has been excellent. Everton had a really strong period for 20 minutes in this match, but over the last five or so, Bournemouth have come back into it, and a, a looking maybe the more likely to get the goal although Everton are just breaking forward at the moment and do have a corner but chances have generally been there have been plenty of them but they just haven't tested the keeper yet still Everton nil Bournemouth nil uh, half time out so we'll be going around the grounds for half times when these relegation games reach the 45 Brentford nil Manchester City nil is a half time remember Leicester won West Ham nil in our commentary game as it stands Leicester will be safe Leeds and Everton will be going down half time Arsenal 3 Wolves nil Southampton 2, Liverpool 2 and Forest 1-0 up at Crystal Palace as uh, that corner came in from the left-hand side for Everton but was half cleared and now will be fully cleared by uh, Bournemouth and it stays uh, goalless. That uh, big noise at uh, the King Power Stadium followed a big chance for Bournemouth that just trickled wide. They also felt in that chance that they should have had a penalty but it wasn't given and another chance for Everton is punched away by Mark Travers and another one tipped over the bar and you've got to say Matt Jones that's three saves from Mark Travers into the Bournemouth goal this afternoon in place of Neto and he's been the difference really he certainly has he made a fingertip save from Madrissa Garner Gay midway through this half and he's just made another terrific stop from James Garner who was eyeing the far top corner from maybe 25 yards a curling effort and the goalkeeper got up really well to tip that one over the bar as well I have to say there have been a few penalty shouts for Everton that have gone unwatched or unnoticed by VAR Mina's just gone down in the box from a corner as well and nothing given from that one and I think the half time whistle may just have gone as well so the nerves will only crank up on these players when they go in and maybe maybe Sean Dyche will tell them the Leicester score maybe he won't but as things stand it's not looking good for Everton because they are in the relegation zone Everton nil Bournemouth nil Trevor Sinclair is alongside me Trevor it's been a game which has ebbed and flowed but Everton have got so many balls into the box yeah. and the frustration for them is there's no one there on the end of it yeah it's, it's almost like they're getting the upper hand in possession though getting the ball into the box down this left hand side Gray McNeil and Decore are running rings round Bournemouth but when the ball goes in the box, they're not committing anybody. Onana's got to get in there, Gay's got to get in there, Garner, who's playing on the right-hand side of a, of, a, of a back five, he's got to try and get in there because at the moment, they're getting the ball into the right areas, but they're not getting anybody's in there, so they're never going to... It's almost like a busted flush. You're never going to get a goal if they stick to these uh, tactics and this strategy. They've got to change it somehow by getting more bodies in the box or getting Gray to keep out of this build-up down this left-hand side. So at least you've got one plus an extra body getting in the box when the ball does arrive. Can affect very very quickly ask you about the the chance went or went grey went down in the area we thought it may be a penalty yeah it's one of them a little bit like the Tarkovsky uh, heavy touch the, the, the defender doesn't really know what's around him he looks like he's got the ball under control last minute Damari Gray comes in gets his first touch before the defender gets there and almost gets wiped out I'm not sure whether it was fight to fight because it's a lot more difficult for the referee and the, the VAR to see that kind of contact but it certainly he didn't get the defender didn't get the ball and there was contact between the two players so that could quite easily have been a penalty Stuart Atwell 
Well, today's referee, Michael Oliver, is on VAR, but he didn't ask the referee to go and have a look at it. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil at the break. Yeah, I've got to say that uh, Stuart Atwell looks like he isn't going to be prepared to give a penalty unless it's really obvious this afternoon. Three shouts, none of them obvious, all for Everton. One for Bournemouth, and uh, the Bournemouth players surrounded Stuart Atwell at the end of the half to ask about that particular situation. But it's nil-nil as it stands. Everton will be going down, Leicester will be staying up, and Leeds are going down as well. As things stand at half-time at Ellen Road, Mark Wilson. Yes, Leeds United nil, Tottenham Hotspur one. Harry Kane with his 29th Premier League goal of the season inside the opening two minutes. It made Sam Allardyce's decision to go with such a defensive formation look a particularly strange one. Spurs won the ball on the halfway line, played it down the right-hand side, ball into the edge of the area for Son. He very unselfishly rolled it into the path of Kane, who made no mistake from 10 yards out. But Leeds had a guilt edge chance just shortly after that. Lovely ball in from Rodrigo from the right. Robin Cott, he's never scored for Leeds. He's got a free header 10 yards out. Keeper's beaten. All he's got to do is hit the target. He puts it wide of the post. On the break, Spurs, as you would expect, have had chances. A couple of fault. Harry Kane, as such, has let him down rather surprisingly inside the penalty area. Really should have added at least one more. There was another Robin Cock header white. He's winning everything in the Spurs area. Spurs look a shambles defensively, but Leeds haven't really got enough attacking players on the pitch to take advantage of it. They had late chances in the half. Rodrigo headed wide from close in and Christensen volleyed tamely over the top. The biggest cheer Leeds fans have given today was when they saw Somerville and Willie Nonto warming up. I think Leeds fans want to see those two on the pitch sooner rather than later. As it stands, Leeds going down with a whimper. It's Leeds nil Spurs one. Well, with Leicester winning, it's going to be impossible anyway, but they've got to give themselves a chance. They've got to score goals. They've got to win the game at the very least, Leeds United, and they're 1-0 down as things stand. They're heading down with Everton and Leicester surviving. What about the rest? Aston Villa. Are they going to be uh, in Europe next season? Villa Park, half-time. Jeff Peters. It's Villa 2, Brighton 1. So, yeah, as it stands, Villa will be joining the Seagulls in Europe next season. They were off to a flyer. Leon Bailey hit the bar before Douglas Louise gave them an eighth-minute lead. The impressive Jacob Ramsey crossed from the left, Louise 12 yards out stroked it home first time Villa second came from Ramsey bursting into the box and teeing up Ollie Watkins to tap in his 15th league goal of the season, Dennis Ondav has had the ball in the net twice for Brighton the first was given but chalked off by VAR the second was flagged offside but VAR overruled a stunning goal it was to halve the deficit Ondav's improvised headed flick gave him room to sweep beyond Martinez, the keeper then denied him one on one just before the break Cracking game here. Villa 2, Brighton 1. Terrific game. Two good sides as well. Uh, no goals at the GTEC half-time. Joe Shannon. Brentford nil, Manchester City nil. Quiet in terms of chances for the much-changed champions. Cole Palmer's shot was turned away by David Raya. At the other end, Ben Mee's shot was saved. Brentford's already slim hopes of making Europe are rapidly fading on a day where they have to win and results elsewhere are going against them. It's Brentford nil, Manchester City nil. Arsenal flying on the final day at the Emirates. Alfie Reynolds. Arsenal 3, Wolves nil at half-time. Time, a dominant Arsenal performance, finishing their season in some style. Two goals for Granit Xhaka, who may well be playing his farewell game for the club. He could have even had a hat-trick, but he slashed another shot wide from the heart of the penalty area. The other goal fell to Saka. Wolves haven't had an effort on target. The half-time score, Arsenal 3, Wolves 0. All square at Stamford Bridge at half-time. Jay Robson. A lively last day game in West London in what will be Frank Lampard's last game in charge, and he thought the writing might be on the wall after nine minutes. Newcastle took an early lead. Anthony Gordon with a finish that slipped under Kepa from close range. But midway through, the Blues were back in it. A well-worked free kick off the training ground saw Sterling's cross turned into his own net by Trippier. Pretty even thereafter, until injury time, when Dubravka made a fantastic save to deny Sterling. That's how it stayed. Chelsea won, Newcastle won. As it stands, Newcastle will be fourth, and Man United will be third at Old Trafford. Mickey Gray. Manchester United won, Fulham won. A goal coming on 19 minutes of Fulham, and it was that man, Kenny Tete, came up for a corner, and William whipped it towards the knee post. Tete got away from his man and just headed the ball low into the Manchester United net. They did have a penalty on 25 minutes. It was won by Tom Kearney. Casemiro fell Kearney just on the inside the 18-yard area. It was a blatant penalty. Mitrovic stepped up and played it down and David De Gea made a wonderful save down to his left-hand side. It sprung Manchester United into life and on 39 minutes, Jadon Sancho got the opportunity to poke the ball into the back of Fulham's net. 
from about three yards out. Great play from Fred. Worked the ball really well. Got a little deflection on its way to Shan Show. Just had to put the ball into the back of the net. They've come close to getting the second goal Man United through. Ganacho on a couple of occasions. He's hit the crossbar. Rash but Rashford's had a couple of chances also, but a really open game of football. Manchester United won, Fulham won. Uh, Southampton down but not out this afternoon at St Mary's, Alex Crook. Southampton 2, Liverpool 2, this is the deadest of final day dead rubbers. Liverpool guaranteed fifth, Southampton can't finish lower than bottom. But I'll tell you what, it's made for a brilliant spectacle. Liverpool took the lead on 10 minutes when Diogo Jota seized on an error inside his own penalty area from Ro Romeo Lavia. Four minutes later, Bobby Firmino in his farewell appearance as a Liverpool player he doubled their lead lovely jinking run beyond virtually the entire Southampton back line before driving his shot through the legs of Alex McCarthy the goalkeeper Southampton back in it five minutes later James Ward Prout on what could be his last game for the club he fired home after being teed up by Carlos Alcaraz and Saints back on level terms in the 28th minute Theo Walcott the provider he's leaving the club after today and it was Camaldine Sulemana, their record signing who fired underneath Kelleher in the Liverpool goal. Half time here Southampton 2, Liverpool 2. Forest end in the season with a flourish at Selhurst Park half time Ollie Klink. Yeah it's Crystal Palace nil. Nottingham Forest 1 at the break Tyro a one year with the goal on the half hour mark. A lovely finish into the bottom corner after being played through by Morgan Gibbs White. It was against the run of play though. Eberechi Eze had Palace's best chance just before the opener he tried to bundle home Elise's cross but it was cleared off the line by his own teammate Jordan Ayew to coin a word Adrian this has been a bit end of season-y but it's the Forest fans at the moment who are having fun in the sun half time at Selhurst Park Crystal Palace nil Nottingham Forest one let's get the latest from Betfair then the official betting partner of TalkSport's Premier League Club coverage game day on TalkSport with Betfair get a hand from Betfair's popular bet builder and easily add our fan favourite football selections to your bet slip terms and conditions apply see support.betfair.com 18 plus be gamblerware.org well, Sam Rossbottom from Betfair. Well, Leicester staying up. Leeds and Everton are going down as things stand. Another 45 minutes of the season to go. Leicester leading West Ham by a goal to nil. Give us the half-time odds on that one. Yeah, absolutely massive goal from Harvey Barnes, that wasn't it? Leicester in a strong position in the betting market now. They're as short as 4 to four to 11 to, uh, to go on and claim all three points. West Ham 19 to 2 to turn it around and get the win. The draw in that one, 16 to 5. Uh, Sam, thanks very much. That odds update is all thanks to Betfair returns. Accurate as of 10 minutes ago for verification. See betfair.com over 18s only. Conditions apply. Go to begambleaware.org. Game day on TalkSport with Betfair. Get a hand from Betfair's popular bet builder and easily add our fan favourite football selections to your bet slip. Terms and conditions apply. See support.betfair.com. 18 plus with gambleaware.org. This is game day. Halftime classifieds. Premier League, Arsenal 3, Wolves 0, Aston Villa 2, Brighton 1, Brentford 0, Man City 0, Chelsea 1, Newcastle 1, Crystal Palace 0, Nottingham Forest 1, Everton 0, Bournemouth 0, Leeds 0, Spurs 1, Leicester 1, West Ham 0, Man United 1, Fulham 1, Southampton 2, Liverpool 2 in the League 2 playoff final finish, Carlisle 1, Stockport 1, Carlisle 1, 5-4 on penalties, and in the Scottish Premiership, Kilmarnock 3, Ross County 1, Ross County face Partick in a playoff first leg Thursday night. Motherwell 3, Dundee United 2, Dundee United relegated. And St Johnston 2, Livingston 0. There can be only one Monday afternoon. Sport Sport brings you the League One playoff final live. He's fallen it high into the roof of the net. A place in the championship awaits either Sheffield Wednesday or Barnsley. It's a sensational goal. Breathtaking build-up from one. Kick-off, 3 p.m. Exclusively on Talk Sport. The Talk Sport Sports Bar. The radio speakeasy for aficionados of sport. Sometimes you want to go where Jason Condy knows your name. Thanks, Glenn. Glenn, go on, Glenn, boy. And no horrors glad you came. My face is cold. You want to moan when you're on the phone. It's the, the referee's to blame. You want to be where everybody loves the game. The Sports Bar opens Monday to Thursday nights from 10 on Talk Sport. Wednesday night, the UEFA Europa League final live on Talk Sports. It's a thunderous belter! Sevilla versus Roma. And he scores! Coverage from 7, kick off 8pm. He's been on fire all day! 
Wednesday night on Talk Sport. Solid gold for all action. Levitate above the humdrum. Game day lies on Talk Sport, official broadcast partner of the Premier League. Wow, what a first half already and there's another 45 and more to come of the season when it will all be decided. Everton, 69 successive seasons in the top flight. Could it be about to come to an end? Could this be the very last top flight game ever at Goodison Park after next season they move into the new ground at Bramley Moor Dock and next season could be in the championship. As it stands, it will be in the championship. No more top flight football at Goodison Park as it stands. Other end of the pit, other, other end of the table rather, Manchester United in third, Newcastle in fourth, Villa will take the conference league place, but goals anywhere could change anything. We're focusing on the bottom. Leeds United went a goal down early on in that first half. Harry Kane with it, his 29th of the season. And so Leeds looking doomed. Uh, Everton here, goalless. They've had penalty shouts. They've had chances. There's been saves from the Bournemouth keeper, Mark Travers, uh, as well. But it remains goalless. And if it stays like that, with Leicester leading, Leeds and Everton will be going down. Scott Minto at Leicester 1, West Ham 0. Sounded like a cracking goal from Harvey Barnes. And it sounded like Leicester deserved that in the first half. Absolutely. Tick, tick on both of those points, Aid. Look, the first 15 minutes or so were, were quite even, really. Not really too many chances. I thought Leicester were running around a lot without having that kind of composure. You could see they had that nervous energy in them. But then the game settled down. James Madison started coming in off the wing and bossing things. Iheanacho was dropping off or sometimes going in behind as well. But the goal itself, great play from Harvey Barnes. And again, it was a nice one-two off Iheanacho. The Inacho's weight of pass of that one-two was perfect. It meant that the momentum that Harvey Barnes had built up with his speed, he could get in behind Soufal. And then it's a question of, do you have that composure? I mentioned that word quite a few times in the first half, but he certainly did that. And he passed the ball past Fabianski into the inside side netting of the, the far goal. And it was a wonderful finish. And absolutely been by far and away the better side. And I'll tell you what, Abe, I'm thinking now, if I'm a West Ham player, I'm 45 minutes away from my next game being a European final. How much do I really want to come back into this? Not quite 100% in the way that Leicester need to. So, fascinating second half to come. Let's see. Well, Everton need a goal. They've just come out for the second half. At the end of the first half, there was booze from the Everton fans. I think it might have been more towards the officials not giving uh, Stuart Outwell, not giving Everton a penalty from three shouts in that first half. Uh, but Everton needs a goal. If they win, remember, they stay up. Everton have 45 minutes to save their Premier League lives here at Goodison Park and they may even need a favour from their old manager David Moyes his West Ham a goal down and as it stands Leicester staying up second half then at the King Power Stadium Leicester 1 West Ham 0 Scott Minter and Sam Mathface so we've had a 17 and a half minute half time here in order for the Premier League to ensure that this game kicks off at a very similar time to the one at Goodison Park because the game at Goodison Park as I understand it kicked off about a minute later than the game here and then there was three minutes of added time so they've just tried to synchronize things Scott how important is that yeah rightly so I mean, you know look, it's not going to end exactly to the second but I think if you can start it to the second which you should be able to or pretty close to then you know, at least the second half starts and almost finishes at the same time. Look, we've got a fascinating 45 minutes to come. If Leicester carry on playing like that, then they will win this game. And it really puts the pressure onto Everton at Goodison. But can Leicester hold out? Will they start to get nervous? Will West Ham come into the game? Will Jared Bowen come on and use his pace? So many questions yet to be answered. Talk Sport, the best place to be on the final day of the season. We are at the King Power Stadium. With Leicester leading by a goal to nil, thanks to Harvey Barnes, who scored after 34 minutes. We're still awaiting Simon Hooper to get the all clear on this near touchline. He's looking at the fourth official and the Premier League match manager who are in deep conversation. I think they are trying to synchronise exactly with what's happening at Goodison Park. The signal's been given, we're underway. And the second half begins live on Talk Sport with Leicester City defending the goal away to our left and attacking the goal away to our right, all in blue. 
and West Ham United in claret and blue attacking the goal away to our left-hand side. We've got a goal very early in the second half at St Mary's, Alex Crook. Southampton 3, Liverpool 2 from 2-0 down. The home side in front. It came after a Liverpool attack. Southampton broke quickly. Camaldine Sulemana picked up the ball in the centre circle, kept running and running, and then he's fired into the bottom corner from 20 yards out. Southampton 3, Liverpool 2. What a rare, strange turn of events. The end of the season does bring some very odd results, bearing in mind Southampton haven't won a game since March the foursome and, and won once at home in the Premier League in 2023, and that was when they beat Leicester in March. Uh, here the ball is over on the far side, and it's with West Ham United and Sofau into the centre, away by Fass, who clears from the edge of his own penalty area. And the winds of change blowing through the King Power Stadium. It's got a little bit murky overhead. It's a bright sunny day prior to uh, kick off here. It's not the case now. It's got a little bit chillier. The weather's turned. You're doing well. You, it's only the t-shirt still, Sam. It is, yeah. You've got a bet with yourself. You're not putting a jacket on. <laughs> ben Rama down the left-hand side, tricking his way into the box. He flips the ball up. There's a chest away from Evans, who thought he was being Touched from behind by uh, Antonio, knocked him to the floor and it's going to be a free kick on the edge of the six-yard box for Leicester City. Dean Smith has never beaten David Moyes and he's never beaten West Ham. Now would be a very good time to start. And these two teams met in the final Premier League match for the second time after West Ham recorded a 4-3 win at Upton Park, 97-98. That game included doubles by Samassi Abu for the Hammers and Tony Cotty who was playing for Leicester City at the time. This is the Tony Cotty derby, isn't it? <laughs> it is, isn't it? I saw him downstairs, actually, uh, Tone, earlier on today. Great guy, TC. Great guy. Uh, foul has been inflicted on Harvey Barnes over on the far side, and he's on all fours now, inside his own territory. Just trying to get uh, to his haunches. There has been a goal at Ellen Road. Just how big is this goal at Ellen Road, Mark Wilson? It's all over, surely, for Leeds United in the Premier League. Tottenham Hotspur have scored within 90 seconds of the restart. Won the ball inside the Leeds half, played into Pedro Porro, and he drilled it into the bottom uh, corner past Robles, who gave him no chance. The boos already. You're, you're not fit to wear the shirt. Ringing around Ellen Road. Leeds are going down. It's Leeds nil, Spurs 2. Leeds are going back to the championship and they're going back to the championship because they've conceded the most goals in the league by some margin that's 76 over the course of the season they conceded within two minutes of the first half starting they've conceded within two minutes of the second half starting and you have to say that that's the kind of thing that undoes you on the final day of the season it undoes you throughout the course of the campaign and that's been their issue you took the words right out of my mouth how can that happen big Sam would be pulling his hair out Barnes down the right hand side for Leicester City on the attack looking to save themselves in the Premier League offside flag goes up belatedly he did have a touch and a half of the ball before eventually Adrian Holmes raised his flag on this near sign. It is a free kick to West Ham United. Back to Big Sam, you were saying. Yeah, I could have carried on what I was saying. Um, you know, you set you set up a, a defensive team. Question marks will be saying about, oh, that's too defensive. So what you cannot do in the first few minutes of each of the half is concede. Now, obviously, we've not been able to see the goal ourselves, but you know, that's a mentality thing, Sam. That's not, nothing that Big Sam can do about it. I would start calling you Little Sam now. <laughs> between the two. You're Little Sam. He's big Sam, but he'll be livid. Uh, here is Ben Rama in the back of uh, Timothy Castagna trying to play the ball square to Antonio and then Samaro does very well under pressure from Paqueta to turn inside, draw a foul inside his own penalty area, win a free kick and take the pressure off the Leicester defence. I mean, Leeds United, look, they wilted under under pressure from West Ham after taking the lead the other week and you know, they just haven't seemed to show that fight, that character, that desire that was so evident and apparent under Marcelo Bielsa. I think it's been ever since that Palace game almost, isn't it? Oh. You know, 1-0 up, almost coming up to half-time, suddenly, bang, goal. They lose heavily, 5-1, 6-1 the next game against Liverpool and ever since then, you know, I think the game before that was Nottingham Forest where they got the win. If they'd beaten Crystal Palace that day, they'd been basically so sliding doors moment. Oh. I mean, it's been a uh, it's been a terrible end to the season for uh, Leeds United. Been a great end to the uh, well, great start to the day so far for the uh, 
Leicester chairman the, the, the top pre- sorry Sam I'll just finish on Leeds the Premier League will be poorer without them in it it's a real shame but you you know ultimately you get what you deserve two lads are listening to their radios in the front row of the stand still keeping a keen eye on what's going on here as their eyes dart from one end to the other it was a bit of a basketball match in this game early on but we've got a free kick to West Ham just in front of their own penalty area so we'll go off to the game at Goodison Park and find out how their second half has started there Matt Jones five minutes gone in the second half it's still Everton nil Bournemouth nil quite a subdued start to the second half for Everton they've uh, not been as good on the ball as they were before the break they've given away quite a lot and as of yet they've not created a chance either although there was a free kick into the box from Gray then that was uh, comfortably cleared Everton nil Bournemouth nil the implications of relegation are real for both Everton and for Leicester City. Leicester City lost 92 million quid last year. They've got a 182 million pound wage bill, a loan with an Australian bank that is secured against future Premier League television rights. They need to stay up. Everton's financial problems well documented. Corner for West Ham United over on the far side, back here at the King Power Stadium, with Leicester leading by a goal to nil at the moment, saving themselves. In towards the near post, and it's flicked by again, and it's narrowly wide at the upright. And Leicester, who had so many problems from defending set pieces over the course of the season, almost conceded another goal. Yeah, I think that's come off Johnny Evans. He's always tried to head it away and it's come off the back of his head. He just missed it because Agues jumped in front of him, so he's not seen it. He's not able to therefore time it properly. And instead of his forehead, it's come off the back of his head. That was almost a massive moment of danger for Danny Everson and for that Leicester defence. Cresswell to take the corner from the near side, left footed, he's got a great delivery from this sort of area, he sends it towards the edge of the 6 yard box, this time Evans' header is a little bit cleaner and he sends it away, it comes back via Flynn Downs towards the West Ham left, they're on the attack again with Saeed Benrahma whose right footed cross is delivered towards Aged, Evans is there once more and uh, it's then headed away by Samare, out towards the far side. Collected by Pakita, who travels towards the midpoint of the Leicester half, lays it through the middle towards Rice. Rice on to the left. It's taken on by Cresswell. Tight to the touchline near side is Ben Rama, getting the better of Castagna. Castagna does well, holds firm, and manages to find Madison, who will then bring the ball down this right side. He gets away from Ben Rama. That's brilliant. brilliant. Carrying the ball from Madison into Tielemans just when his team needed to take the pressure off. And now it's sent wide down the right. Again, chasing with Ahia Nacho to get the ball. There's a very soft foul that's been given in Aguerd's favour there. Well, actually, three things there. First of all, really good defending from Castagno. Looked like he was beaten by Saeed Ben Rama. Came back in. Then James Madison looked like he was just going to hook it down the line and somehow got away from two, if not three players. And what about the pace from Aguerd? Iheanacho's quick, but he did him for pace there over 20 yards. Yeah, Aguerd, brilliant in terms of pace. They may well need that when we get to the Conference League final. The West Ham game away in Prague against Fiorentina is live on Talk Sport. We'll be there in Prague with Dean Ashton and Adrian Durham. And we'll get there the day before. We'll bring you all the flavour of what it's like to be in Prague as well. We'll do the same in Istanbul with Manchester City. Oh, no, both those games, those huge games live on TalkSport, the Europa League finals live on TalkSport on Wednesday night as well. Leicester playing good football, getting out from the back well, up through the middle of the pitch via Dewsbury Hall. He plays it centrally to Madison, who takes it in, controls it, turns away, plays it back to Dewsbury Hall left side. He travels to the edge of the box, he needs some support now, but he hasn't got much of that. But it's West Ham players who are drawn to him, they smuggle the ball out and it's away for a throw-in over on the left-hand side. There's been a goal at Old Trafford for Mickey Gray. Well, they've turned it around, it's now Manchester United 2, Fulham 1, great reverse pass from Fred again with the assist. Fernandez beats the offside line, has one touch and then just dinks it over Leno into the back of the Fulham net. Manchester United 2, Fulham 1. Ah, Bruno Fernandez has been terrific for them over the course of the season and Manchester United win that game, it'll be a 41st win of the season. 41 wins from 61 matches. I think they would have taken that at the beginning of the campaign. Uh, Leicester think they should have had a foul and as a result of it the ball has broken to West Ham and they're moving up into Leicester territory. Cresswell's got hold of it now, Dean Smith looking agitated, John Terry is out on the edge of the technical area berating the assistant on this near side and then taking his seat back on the uh, bench as he's uh, had his say. Former Chelsea captain, here is uh, Declan Rice forward towards Antonio looking to roll past fast he's got support from Ben Rama Ben Rama allows Antonio to hold on to the ball and then Rice takes it on midway inside Leicester territory Cresswell's got it now Manchester United look as if they're going to secure third place in the league with that victory over Fulham 
Leicester look as if they're going to secure a place in the Premier League for next season if it stays as it is right now. They're above Everton on goal difference thanks to their 1-0 lead that they have here. But a goal for Everton changes everything at Goodison Park. Four nows down the right, onto Sofau. He's crossing to the box, he's aimed towards Antonio. Flicked away by Fast, and it goes behind. A goal for West Ham changes Absolutely. things here as well. Just about to say that as well, and I wondered about the reaction of West Ham in the second half. Would they really be up for it, or would one mind be, or part of their mind be on the Europa Conference final? They've reacted really well, and Leicester have been on the back foot. Leicester have spent nine seasons back in the Premier League. Their average finish of seventh in the last seven seasons. They could be the second Premier League champions to be relegated should they go down today. At the moment, they're saving themselves. The corner on the far side to be taken by Cresswell. It's a congested six-yard box here. Again, up from the back, he's occupying the near post. There's a bit of shirt pulling. Everson jumps into the sky, grabs the ball above the head from the on-rushing. Again, Antilo Kera, and it's cleared away by Leicester City, and they lead by a goal to nil. These are the scorelines in the Premier League this final day of the Premier League season. Arsenal lead by three goals to nil at home against uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. That's the latest scoreline. Aston Villa are 2-1 up against Brighton. It's Brentford nil, Manchester City nil. Chelsea 1, Newcastle 1. Crystal Palace nil, Nottingham Forest 1. Everton nil, Bournemouth nil. Tottenham are 2 nil up away at Leeds. Leicester leading here by a goal to nil. Manchester United 2-1 up at home against Fulham. And Southampton are beating Liverpool by three goals to two. Here's Madison. Lovely turn and then dart in towards West Ham territory. Another little turn, a shimmy. He keeps hold of the ball brilliantly, plays it towards the left. Terrific football. It's out towards the left-hand side. There's been a goal at Goodison Park. We'll tell you about it as soon as this play develops here. It's gone back into midfield. It's with Luke Thomas. Let's go there. It's Matt Jones. There's been an absolute screamer. It's Everton 1, Bournemouth 0. 57 minutes on the clock and Goodison has erupted because Abdullahi Dekori has just smashed into the bottom corner from 25 yards. The ball fell to him from a partially cleared cross and he absolutely hammers it into the bottom corner and it's probably no more than Everton deserved. The players are still celebrating because at this moment, if scores stay as they are, Everton are staying up. Everton one, Bournemouth nil. There's a real hush around this stadium now, a murmur of disquiet. The West Ham fans are letting the Leicester fans know that as it stands, they're going down. Leicester will be relegated because of that Everton goal from Abdoulaye Decore, his fifth of the season. It could be the biggest goal he scores in Everton Blue. Leicester City leading by a goal to nil will have 34 points from 38 games but jumping above them thanks to that goal. Everton 36 points from 38 games. They always knew if Everton were beating Bournemouth they could do nothing about it Scott Minto and all they can do now is win this game. Did you say to me at half time you fancied Everton to score? You did say that didn't you? Well, there's nothing they can do, Leicester, apart from just win this game. What you don't want is Bournemouth to score a late equaliser and you haven't done the job here. So they've got to make sure they keep this clean sheet. Ball is out on the right side with West Ham so foul. It comes into the penalty area and it's clipped towards the far side. Barnes travels forward. They've got to make sure they do their job. Do their job and anything can still happen. But they have to see this through. They can't take the foot off the gas, even though the atmosphere has significantly changed, eerily changed, so quickly inside this stadium. Yeah, I can only hear the West Ham fans now, but I'll tell you what, Sam, the last 20 minutes, those Everton players, even being 1-0 up, will get very nervous indeed. And to Antonio towards the edge of the box, the West Ham fans singing, you're going down, as Ben Rama picks it up onto his right foot, turns it towards the far corner, hits the post, comes back into the penalty area, and they just about get it clear. Antonio goes down after a tangle with Thomas, and then a free kick is given against him over on the far side a really nervous moment there because the West Ham fans might have been singing you're going down they would have been had that have got in I tell you what the whole defense just opened up there as well it was a great overlapping run where one of those use me by not using me and Ben Rama comes inside creates that space and he just tries to whip it to the far post he was a yard further out I think it would have curled in Everson was absolutely beaten there West Ham have been really good the second half I have to say Leicester not quite able to control the game like they did in the first and how often do we see that happen? Story happening at Everton where they're leading by goal to nil. Abdoulaye Decore with the goal around here. Everybody checking radios, checking apps, trying to find out if there's any information. They know that their future depends on the fate of others. It's in the hands of Everton and Bournemouth at this moment in time. They're leading 
here Leicester City by a goal to nil but it's not enough because if Everton win then Leicester are going down and Everton have really struggled with their home form 10 defeats at Goodison Park this season the worst home run in their league history they've only won seven games all season in the league but they're winning at this moment in time and it could be enough to keep that grand old club in the Premier League for another season. There's been a goal at the Emirates. Talk Sports, Alfie Reynolds. Arsenal 4, Wolves nil. 60 minutes gone here. Gabriel Jesus heading in Trossard's cross. This game done and dusted. It might not end in a Premier League title, but the Gunners are finishing in some style here. Arsenal 4, Wolves nil. That's over 100 goals for the season in all competitions for Arsenal now. Uh, the 19-year wait for the title can go on, but... They do equal a club record for most Premier League wins in a single campaign with a victory today. Leicester have won a free kick over on the far side. Glum faces inside the King Power Stadium. They're doing their job, but Everton are also doing theirs. And as a result, at this moment in time, Leeds and Leicester are going to the Championship. Ball is on the touchline on the far side. And it will be taken by Tielemans. A free kick in the left wing position into Fast. Fast rises, guides the ball in. And Leicester City have a lifeline. They're going to do their job at home at the King Power Stadium. But their fate is in the hands of others. Valt Fast guiding the free kick from Tielemans home to give Leicester a 2-0 lead. And all they can do now is cross their fingers. Absolutely. You better still, Sam, get the job done. Don't concede at all. Make sure you keep that clean sheet and don't you get nervous in the last 20 minutes because I'm telling you now at Goodison Park in those last 20 minutes 15 minutes 10 minutes 5 minutes it's human nature they will just drop off but here Leicester are getting the job done really good header from Valtfast great ball in I mean question marks will be asked about the defending and I'm sure David Moyes won't want that kind of defending in Prague but Leicester 2-0 after West Ham coming back into it in the second half they are getting their side done Jared Bowen and Danny Ings coming on for Antonio and Saeed Benrahma here. Fireworks going off outside Goodison Park. What's happening inside Goodison Park? Matt Jones. Yeah, still Everton 1, Bournemouth nil. The atmosphere inside the stadium has completely lifted. As you say, fireworks were going off over the Gladys Street end. There's been some flares that off in the stadium as well. The fans are absolutely loving themselves at the moment, but their team hasn't had any further chances since that Abdoulaye Decore goal, and they'll be hoping that a second does come so they can ease the nerves over the final 28 minutes. Everton 1, Bournemouth 0. Any chance of a Bournemouth goal, Matt? Has there been any attack from them? We haven't seen one in the second half yet, really, in terms of a chance. There's been a save from Travers at the other end from Damari Gray, but Bournemouth, all their chances really came at the both ends of the first half. Second half, not so good. OK, we'll keep in touch with you. Um, Everton leading at them this moment in time. Leicester going down despite leading here by two goals to nil. Brilliant job that Gary O'Neill's done. Absolutely brilliant, but he won't want to finish the season with four defeats. Bowen, the substitute, down the right side, cutting in, left-footed strike into the near post, and it goes behind and away. Uh, for a goal kick away to our left hand side there's been another goal at St Mary's Talk Sports Alex Crook Southampton 4 Liverpool 2 Ruben Sellers bowing out on a high Adam Armstrong within seconds of coming off the bench he seized on a poor pass from Jordan Henderson and fired low left footed into the bottom corner it's Southampton 4 Liverpool 2 Amazing, Southampton have got their worst defensive record since 1991. They haven't scored that many goals either, but they've scored four in one day against Liverpool. They've scored three against Arsenal. There's been another goal somewhere else. Where was it? It was at Selhurst Park. Talk sports, Holly Clink. Equaliser for Palace. Crystal Palace 1, Nottingham Forest 1. Will Hughes has headed home an Elise cross and Palace a level. Our gone. Crystal Palace 1, Nottingham Forest 1. West Ham fans taunting the Leicester supporters 2-0, but you're going down is uh, what they're singing over on the far side in the corner of the stand opposite us. The West Ham fans getting ready for their trip to Europe in a couple of weeks, but Leicester doing the job on them here. Ejia Nacho trying to get in behind as the ball's played forward to him. He holds it up brilliantly. Again, he's been terrific today. On to Barnes' left side, moves into the penalty area, tries to backheel the ball to Ejia Nacho. It wasn't the greatest delivery. Goes back to Thomas and and Leicester will look to build. We've got 25 minutes to go. You're listening to Talk Sport. We're live at the King Power Stadium. We're Leicester leading by two goals to nil. Leeds trailing by two goals to nil at Ellen Road, live on Talk Sport 2. And then Everton leading by a goal to nil. It's all about Goodison now, Sam. I can see West Ham just, you know, they don't need to even get a point out of this game. Leicester are 2 0 up already. It's all about Goodison, what's happening there. As long as Leicester don't stop playing. At this moment in time, they've played well. They've 
constructed chances, scored goals and put themselves into a position where they could, should Bournemouth get an equaliser, stay in the Premier League. Here on the right side, the ball is with Castagna in towards the back post and it's headed away by Sofal. It's down by Pakitar and then nudged back towards the edge of the penalty area, Flynn Downs and now Bowen keeping hold of it over on the far side and he is caught by Johnny Evans, that's going to be a yellow card for Johnny Evans. And Johnny Evans didn't need to make that tackle off, he did commit a little bit earlier, then he kind of stopped and then, it, and then he went again, so once you stop, just stand up, let Bowen run into you, but by diving and making the tackle, pretty simple for someone like Bowen, the pace that he's got, just to nick it past him and then get the contact and there's a yellow card. 2-0 here, here's Rice, over towards the left and four nows, four nows, clipping the ball in towards the uh, chest of Danny Ings, looking to turn and trying to fire a shot away, but he's stopped by Tielemans who drags them up the pitch again and moves up towards the middle of it, it's caught by Ings. Look, circumstances are different here, right, because they're, but the onus is definitely on this, a yellow card is that going to be for Ings for dragging him back, I think it is. Uh, circumstances are different here, obviously, because of the situation that both clubs find themselves in, and there's context that needs to be applied there but there will be less the fans that are asking this question where are these performances absolutely where's this fight this dogged determination this this absolute will to win this this dig in and help out and do whatever it takes to get over the line where's that attitude been all season why does it get to the last couple of games of the season to 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 throw yourself at the ball to work really hard I mean, I was at Craven Cottage as well, and, and they were shocking. I mean, they were 3-0 down at half-time. It could have been 5 or 6. The 5-3 scoreline, trust me, it flattered them. Oh, not I Fulham. saw the game. It was unbelievable. It was chaotic. It was frenetic. It was so lacking in control. There was it, no protection for the defence. It's happened all season. You know, people might sort of say, oh, well, Dean Smith, that gamble at St James's Park, that didn't work. And, and you can turn around and say, no, it didn't. But they, they haven't got relegated on the last two matches. They got relegated of everything else that went before it. No, but that approach will come under question now won't it because ultimately from you probably it, 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 but it has it has backfired because you know if they had won that game on Monday night and won this one they would be surviving yeah it's, it's a big if it's a big if but you're right there's no if if, the, if, if you don't if you don't go for it no listen and, and and I think I think the bottom line is there have been criticism either way you know he will turn around and say Dean Smith we would have gone for it at, against Newcastle at St James's Park but we haven't kept a clean sheet since before the World Cup we would, we would get torn apart like the game against Craven Cottage, but abs people might turn around and say, well, you could at least have given it a go. You, you, you gave the, the power back to uh, Everton. Yeah, Everton have got the power at the moment and there has been a goal at Ellen Road. Talk Sports, Mark Wilson. Yeah, one back for Leeds. Jack Harrison, neat finish from the edge of the box. It was met with a big roar of defiance from the home crowd, but they've got plenty of work to do. 23 left, Leeds 1, Spurs 2. Madison jinking his way towards the edge of the penalty area, bounding his way to the box, trying to get the shot away. Didn't have the power by the time he got there to get it away because he'd been tugged and pushed and pulled as he was trying to wriggle free of three West Ham defenders' grasp. Aguerd, Keatilo, Kerrer and Vlad so foul but he uh, still showed such trickery and poise that he is going to be a sort after commodity he, he will be he will be and it reminded me of like a pad of the canio Bowen on the right side fires a shot towards goal then sets up Danny Ings over the top of the crossbar what a miss from Danny Ings good save initially by Everson whose shot from Bowen was repelled by the big Danish goalkeeper but it came back to Danny Ings and that's why he hasn't scored a goal in any of his last nine appearances absolutely just talking about James Madison the way he reminded me of Palo de Canio not the quickest but so skillful and created a chance for himself but that chance there from Danny Ings my goodness me he's what eight ten yards out right in front of goal you have to hit the target get over it Leicester leading by two goals to nil here, but Everton leading at Goodison Park means they'll be relegated. Let's get there with Trevor Sinclair and Matt Jones. It's still Everton 1, Bournemouth nil. though. There's just been a very hairy moment for Everton. Dominic Solanke going through uh, to try and have a shot on goal, but Jordan Pickford was there in the way of him. Now, those two have had a coming together afterwards. Solanke's just been shown a yellow card, and I think Pickford's going to get one as well, though Pickford needs some treatment as well after uh, the incident uh, where they did come together. Trevor Sinclair's alongside me you've been in this situation before with so much riding on the last game of the season what are the nerves going to be like for the last 20 minutes well I think they, they would prefer another goal wouldn't they because uh, you can see there's a bit of danger there still with this Bournemouth side they're not going to give up uh, and on that occasion it was a fantastic claw away you know he was desperate to get there Solanke looked like he could have got there and he's he, between himself and uh, Connor Cody managed to just get the ball away and then 
there was a coming together between the pair of them and Solanke and Pickford obviously a little bit of ego there and yeah he split it up Tarkovsky but yeah it's a, it's a difficult time with that game because the a bit of players will want to get that second goal or 90 minutes ASAP they certainly will 20 to go Everton 1 Bournemouth 0 at this moment in time Everton is staying up Leeds United are going down with Leicester Keenan Dewsbury Hall comes off on this near side he's going to be replaced by Mendy for the last few minutes of this game let's head off to Ellen Road because there has been a goal and it's not great news Mark Wilson no Leeds back in it for a matter of seconds Harry Kane on the break Cooper's header in midfield fell to Spurs they broke forward Porro fed in Kane edge of the box drove in on goal fine finish his 30th league goal of the season Leeds 1 Spurs 3 well that is a fantastic return from Harry Kane who becomes the first player to score 30 Premier League goals in multiple seasons since Alan Shearer let's go off to St Mary's there's been a couple of goals down at St Mary's for Alex Crook. Oh, this is utterly bonkers. Southampton 4, Liverpool 4, Cody Gakpo off the bench. He turned in a low cross from Trent Alexander-Arnold at the far post. Seconds later, Salah rolled the ball forward to Jota. He smashes it into the top corner. Southampton 4, Liverpool 4. Maxwell Corne has come on for Pakitar. Emerson has come on for uh, Aaron Cresswell here I just wonder whether or not there's fantasy managers scratching their heads everywhere going what on earth is going on down at St Mary's it's ruining my team of course there'll be people in draft leagues in fantasy leagues everywhere that just need a big result today to win the league or, or to get into a decent position or maybe avoid being bottom of the table and these things change people's moods Cook has had a few nil nils over the season hasn't he so he deserves a, a good one today <laughs> uh -huh. 4-4 down at St Mary's uh, it's been a, a busy old day up and down the country we said at half time there'd be an enormous number of goals today uh, it's Arsenal 4 Wolverhampton Wanderers 0 Aston Villa 2 Brighton 1 Aston Villa going to the Europa Conference League Brentford 0 the champions Manchester City 0 Chelsea 1 Newcastle 1 Crystal Palace 1 Nottingham Forest 1 Tyro Wanyi getting 10 goals now for the season Everton 1-0 up against Bournemouth that's relegating both Leeds and Leicester ball in towards the near post from the left side by Emerson Palmieri the West Ham United fullback but it's cleared away and Madison's got the opportunity to break now he's found Kalecia here Nacho he wants the return he's going to get the return Madison as Leicester respond from one attack and construct one of their own and here Nacho just slows it down as he gets it back from Madison he's waiting for numbers to join and they keep hold of the ball Leeds 1 Tottenham 3 Leicester 2-0 up here Manchester United are going to claim third place they lead Fulham by two goals to one and Southampton 4 Liverpool 4 the latest scoreline down at St Mary's but all important games really are the Villa the fact that Villa are getting into the Conference League and Everton are staying in the Premier League and Leeds and Leicester will be perishing um, there's a bit injury to Jordan Pickford at Goodison Park Talk Sports Matt Jones yeah we actually haven't restarted play since you were last with us Sam still Everton won Bournemouth nil then but four minutes Jordan Pickford has been down for receiving some treatment it looks like it's to his finger uh, I'm not sure if maybe he got stood on during that incident when he had the coming together with Solanke it does mean that Asmir Begovic has been warming up on the touchline he hasn't played in the Premier League since September but it does look as though Pickford is going to be okay to continue at the moment which will be good news for Everton Everton 1 Bournemouth 0 back here it's Leicester City who lead by two goals to nil but it's West Ham on the attack with Declan Rice swinging the ball to the far side so foul heads the ball back into the penalty area comes back out as far as Flynn Downs back to Declan Rice once again is he playing his last Premier League game for West Ham today I'm sure that all of that will become more apparent in the fullness of time the transfer window opens in June and we will keep you updated with everything that happens over the course of the uh, summer unfortunately for West Ham uh, I think that's a yes mm. here's so foul into the right wing position low ball into Danny Ings and that was a more difficult chance but it's set it in the same place over the top of the crossbar when Leicester beat Tottenham Hotspur on February the 11th and they've won one in 15 since then they were 13th in the table wow I mean the, wow. the decline has been so steep that it borders on a sheer vertical drop yeah, and as I, I go back to, you know, you've left it too late with the last two games. Again, you can talk about the tactics, but that is just not good enough. That, that's relegation form. It is what it is. You know, and uh, what, off the international break, there were nine teams that are very much in with the, the relegation shout. Palace came out. Roy Hodgson came in, did really well. 
Gary O'Neill, fantastic job. Steve Cooper left it late, but got away from all happening on the final day. And Everton, you know, maybe you look back at that Brighton game and say that was the one. That was the coupon buster. That was the one where you weren't expecting to get all three points. Without that, it'd be in Leicester's hands. And I saw James Madison pull up in his red Ferrari before the start of the game today. And my mind went back to that tweet that he sent to Rob Tanner when they uh, lost at Southampton. He was wrong, Sam. He was wrong and Rob was right. He was absolutely right. But that was indicative of the problem. They didn't realise they were in a relegation battle. Totally. They didn't accept that they were in a relegation battle. And because they would refuse to entertain the fact they thought they were play playing well enough and had the players to get out of it, they thought they would. But by the time they realised, it was too late. Do you know what? I, I don't think they did think they were playing well enough. Maybe maybe they did. I, I would be surprised if they did. I just think James Madison didn't want... Madison gets the ball back from Mejia Nacho, then shoots towards goal, takes a deflection and goes wide of the right hand upright. I'll tell you what, he has been superb today, hasn't oh, he's he? Been Great today. play, just coming in off the right. No one can get anywhere near him. And again, a little one-two with Iheanacho. And a fantastic deflection there from Maggard, I have to say. Otherwise, that was going in. Jamie Vardy is coming on to replace Sir Iheanacho, who again has been terrific for Leicester City today. He comes off, Vardy comes on, we will go off to Goodison Park, talk towards Matt Jones. Still Everton 1, Bournemouth 0 with uh, 76 minutes gone. A uh, yellow card has just been shown to one of the Bournemouth bench. There was a very heavy tackle on Connor Cody, which got awarded as a free kick to Everton. But somehow uh, the Bournemouth man, Vigna, got away without getting a booking for it. So we had that long delay, Trevor Sinclair, and I think that's just taken a little bit of the sting out of the game. Yeah, I think it suits Everton because they've not had anything to defend since then. It's stop start and they're controlling everything. There's been no chances at Pickford and I think it'll definitely suit the way Everton want to run this, run the clock down and finish this game off with a win. They've got 14 minutes left but there's going to be a lot of injury time, at least three or four minutes for that delay for the Pickford injury. So we will be well behind you when it comes to full time, Sam. Everton won Bournemouth nil. Jamie Vardy is one more than you, seeing the Leicester fans to the West Ham supporters over on the far side. Vardy on for the last few minutes of the game. They've got a corner here. Leicester City, Yuri Tillemans comes over and applauds the fans. There's almost an air of resignation now inside this stadium because of that scoreline at Goodison Park. And it's almost as if they are trotting out the old stars before they move on to pastures new. Here is Tielemans with the corner on the near side. He swings it right-footed in towards the near post. Away by Maxwell. Corne, goal at the Emirates. It's Talk Sports' Alfie Reynolds. Arsenal 5, Wolves nil. Jakob Kivior with his first goal in the Premier League. It wasn't pretty. A really scrappy goal, which Saar really should have kept out. But it's Arsenal 5, Wolves nil. Arsenal ending the season on a high after what has been a really good season. I wonder if the fans will stay right to the end today to pay tribute. Absolutely, absolutely. It's been a good season for them despite what's happened at the end. That four now is out on this left-hand side. Moves towards the edge of the penalty area. It strikes the ball low and hard. Hits the inside of the post and scores for West Ham United. And they're on the score sheet. It's 2-1. And Pablo Fornals, who went darting down the left channel, there was too much room for him to run into, and he caught out Daniel Everson in his near post by arrowing the ball in off the upright, and it's Leicester 2, West Ham 1. Well, now it just got <clears throat> gets even more nervous now, doesn't it? And, I mean, look at how many Leicester players there are. There's six players up against him, and he's able to still get the shot off, and that's pretty much indicative of Leicester's defending this season, excuse me. Yeah, it was a, a brilliant finish from Paul Pablo Fornals, but he was allowed to get the shot away. No one closed him down, no one engaged. He they're had dropping bodies in off, front of they're him. dropping off. And, just and backward just steps. Allowing him to have the shot. Don't get me wrong, really good finish, really clever finish at the near post. But that, that, that was poor from Leicester. No, it really was. 2-1 the score here. And that's why Leicester City are not going to be in the Premier League next season should the scoreline remain the same at Everton because they've just conceded too many goals. They've just, they just don't keep clean sheets. One clean sheet since the World Cup. That was last week when they put 20 men behind the ball. They just don't do it. It's Leicester 2, West Ham 1 on Talk Sport with Now Sports. And don't forget that with Now Sports, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Leicester versus West Ham and Everton versus Bournemouth live right now for 11 99 no contract search now sports <laughs> I thought there was an attack developing so I tried to go very fast to do that we went on double speed here, if you we? missed it you can watch the streams of these games West Ham away at Leicester and the game between <laughs> Everton and Bournemouth live right now for 11.99 no contract search now sports that's normal speed how hard speed. was that for you? How hard? no that was normal speed that was slow that was, that was slow. tough was it you. slow? ok alright
Uh, ball is with uh, Rice trying to travel up the pitch. He sends it down the right touchline, comes off Samara, then Rice touches it again. It goes out of play. Dean Smith just trying to encourage his team, but he knows it's a forlorn task now. And there's another cheer away to our right hand side. Matt Jones, what's happening? Still Everton 1, Bournemouth nil. In fact, Everton have just had a chance to make it 2 nil, but they failed to do so. A quick counter-attack. Damari Gray slipping at the crucial moment, though, after being played in by Onana, and he eventually skewed his shot wide. Ten minutes to go, plus added time here. Trevor Sinclair, and at the moment, it's uh, going Everton's way. It is. I think the game management's been superb. You know, the stop-start, but the control of the game is all been with Everton. Apart from a little, little fry that Bournemouth had about five minutes ago, little chance there by Damari Gray. He's got it one against one in the box stay on the ball and see you can really hit the target bit disappointed for him but he has worked hard for the team as a focal point he certainly has there's still plenty of time for something to happen Everton won Bournemouth nil I think there is a social media influencer who is playing a trick on the Leicester City fans yeah. and suggesting that things are happening that are not happening there is no goal at Everton there is no goal anywhere else in the Premier League there is every chance at this moment in time that Leicester are going to be relegated. But from what I understand is that there is a social media site that keeps tweeting out that there's been a goal and it is having a reaction in this stadium. As I said to you at the beginning of the game, guys, the only place to keep across the results on the final day of the season is TalkSport. We're first, we're fastest, we've got the accurate news when it happens. If you want trusted sources, this is where you need to be. It's twice they've got up now. Uh, it's in the, in the, in it's actually heartbreaking, really, because the, 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 the level of the, the elevation of the sort of emotion was it's so right. much there. It's not right. It's not funny. It's just, it's, it, do you know what? It ain't funny. 2-1 to Leicester City. Everton are leading in their game at home. It means that Leicester are going to be relegated. And, you know, that James Madison tweet... He, despite what he said the ingredients are all there for relegation 23 uh, 22 Premier League defeats across the season the most defeats in a season since 1994-95 uh, in any division the fewest points since 29 in 03 and 04 that relegation season and it's a warning to anyone else getting overconfident with a high flying finish Leicester finished fifth in the Premier League both in 1920 and 2021 eighth last season the fall when it comes is a quick and sudden drop now, what I was saying earlier was I'd be surprised if James Madison really believed they were playing well enough. What I think he wanted was that the fans not to come and be on the back foot straight away. They give the ball away and they'd be on top of the players. But Rob was absolutely spot on. 83 minutes gone. The ball delivered into the box towards the far post by Emerson looking for Maxwell Corner, whose bicycle kick sends the ball over the top of the crossbar. And it's out of play and away to our left-hand side. And it's a goal kick to Leicester City. Since the World Cup, their form has been absolutely dreadful and after a dodgy start to the season appeared to be rectified, they've won just three of their last 22 Premier League games before today. I thought they were going to get away with trouble just before the World Cup because they... They, well, they, they did. They did, yeah. And then and then after the World Cup, you're expecting, OK, we'll kick on. They didn't. It's not a tap. You can't turn it on and off. Uh, let's get to the GK Community Stadium in Brentford. A goal for Joe Shannon. Brentford 1, Manchester City 0. Ethan Pinnock, eight yards out. Fine finish into the bottom corner. Brentford 1, Manchester City 0. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Brentford lost only two of their last 18 Premier League home fixtures this season. They were in with a chance of sneaking into Europe today. Uh, not impossible, but they would need to win at home for the champions and also hope both Villa and Spurs drop points. They're not. They're both winning. And Villa are going into the Conference League instead. Rice delivers the ball towards the back post for West Ham United. Out comes Everson. Manages to claim. Sits on the ball. Will hold on to it for a little while longer and we'll go back to Goodison Park Matt Jones it's still Everton 1 Bournemouth nil. 84 minutes on the clock Bournemouth are really coming into the game now though Everton are looking very very tired they're defending deep with that back five there's a lot of heavy legs out there and Sean Dyche is going to try and rectify that soon because Ellis Sims is going to come off the bench but Damari Gray he's clearly just pulled up with cramp and Bournemouth are enjoying a lot of possession and getting balls into the box Everton are getting very nervous Everton 1 Bournemouth nil. Well, there's not long to go now and the nerves will be real because any Bournemouth goal, any Bournemouth goal means that Leicester stay yes, yes. in the league. And I said that, didn't I? Last 20, they, it's human nature. They've ra been running around, they've been working hard, but also mentally tired and knowing how close they are to that finishing line, they will drop off. The problem is, is that arguably, um, 
Leicester City are more vulnerable when they've got a lead than oh, when they haven't. That. Don't say that. If no. they're 2-0 if they, if they're up and Bournemouth score a late goal and then they concede a second as well. Yeah. Oh. Have you watched Leicester this season? Oh, I have, but... It's not, it's not beyond the realms of a possibility. It could it, happen. It, it's not, you're Bournemouth right. Bournemouth could you're score right. at Everton. Yeah, but that would and be the worst. every chance that this set piece that West Ham have just won could end in an equaliser. That would be worst case scenario, wouldn't it, for the Leicester fans here? Lanzini on. Flynn Downs is off for the final few minutes of this game. We're in the 86th minute. And the way it stands at this moment in time is that Everton is staying in the Premier League thanks to Abdoulaye Decoré's goal, his fifth of the season and his most important of his Everton career. It could save the team. It could keep them in the Premier League under Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche was appointed after the sacking of Frank Lampard. Here is the free kick taken by Fornaus towards the far post, flicked into the air by Vout Fast and out for a corner to West Ham United over on the far side. Arsenal are winning by five goals to nil. Villa going to the conference leading 2-1. Brentford one up against the champions. 1-1 between Chelsea and Newcastle at Stamford Bridge. The same scoreline, Palace, Nottingham Forest. Everton won the up at against Bournemouth. Leeds 3-1 down to Tottenham. They needed a win today, Leeds. They haven't. Leicester 2-1 up here. Manchester United 2-1 up against Fulham. They're going to finish in third. And Southampton, the bottom club, 4. Liverpool 4. Corner. West Ham. Away to our left. Swung in by Jared Bowen. In towards the near post. A flick on by uh, Cornet. Then stopped by Vardy. Into the air it goes. It's away by Leicester. Look to try and counter-attack. Madison does well to keep hold of the ball. He sends it down the right-hand side. And Vardy now is going through the left-hand side. And Barnes looked to try and find him, but didn't have the ability to get the ball over Emerson. And it's cleared away by West Ham United. And that threat of a counter-attack is over. West Ham face Fiorentina in Prague in the season's Europa Conference League on June the 7th. Live on Talk Sport. It's their third major European final. They were in the Cup Winners' Cup in 65. And, uh, they beat 1860 Munich at Wembley. They were in the 1966 Cup Winners' Cup when they lost to Anderlecht in Brussels. And you do wonder what will happen in Prague. We will be there to find out. But in, the, in the 99 Inter Toto final as well, Sam. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah, did you know you won that, didn't you? We did. I think they played in the Anglo-Italian Cup as well before that, Scott, but you know. Trevor's on one side, I was on the other. We're concentrating on major trophies here. <laughs> well, that hurts, <laughs> but you're right. Here is uh, Lanzini down the left, uh, up to Tielemans who tries to bring the ball away. There's no such jo joviality for the Leicester fans as the ball goes down the right into the penalty area, looking for Bowen. Oh, it's cleared away by Evans out towards the far side. Madison tries to bring it clear. And eventually he managed to do that. It has been an intriguing Premier League season, the most attended Premier League season. And the average attendance has hit over 40,000 for the first time. Madison down in a heap over on the far side, needed some treatment. We've got eight teams in Europe if West Ham win that Conference League final. Vardy's going through the middle, header away by Aguerd. Let's go off to Goodison Park. What's the latest, Matt Jones? Two minutes plus added time to go. Still Everton 1, Bournemouth 0. Everton have just had a chance to make it 2-0, but uh, Tarkowski couldn't quite climb high enough to get enough on his header, and he headed over the bar from McNeil's cross. Bournemouth enjoying some possession at the moment, but Ellis Sims has come on for Everton to replace uh, Damari Gray, and that just gives them a little bit more legs, doesn't it, Trevor? Sinclair. Yeah, I think that's the reason why Everton were getting so deep. Demario Gray he's spent a lot. He's, he's worked really hard for the team, been a good focal point for Everton, but he was just out of gas. And uh, the sooner that substitution could happen, the better for Sean Dykes because they were just dropping deeper and deeper and it looked to be getting in a dangerous situation. So now you've got Ellis Sims, fresh legs, who should control this game to the end. Everton just trying to keep hold of the ball as much as possible and run down that clock, but there could be seven, eight minutes of added time because of the injuries and stoppages that there have been in this uh, second period. So there's still plenty of legs left in this game. Everton won, Bournemouth nil. Back here, there is anguish amongst the Leicester supporters, fear and realisation etched into the faces. They can remember the unbridled joy of the title, the FA Cup, the European adventures. But there is an acceptance now that this team have not been good enough. Madison down on the floor, over on the far side. Brendan Rodgers sensed it 18 months ago when they lost to Forest in the FA Cup. He said that Schmeichel and Vardy were fading. They needed a refresh. It didn't happen. Maybe he should have left when he knew it wasn't going to work, but it's easy to say that from the outside. And this club are not going to survive. Not unless Bournemouth do them a massive favour now. 
They played in the Champions League just six years ago. I remember seeing them win in Bruges. Mark Albrighton scoring their first ever Champions League goal. They beat Porto at home. Then they went to Sevilla and Madrid. It's now certain that the most exotic place that they will be heading is the capital, not of Spain, but the capital of Wales. But there are six minutes of added time here. And it'll be interesting to see how much added time there is at Goodison Park and just how nervous Everton become as West Ham try to release Maxwell Cornet down the left-hand side. He scampers forward and the offside flag goes up against him. The budget will be slashed. There will be people's lives that are affected by relegation. There are 10 minutes of added time at Goodison wow. Park. Wow, still plenty of time for Bournemouth to nick one counter-attack set piece mistake. I hope it's not a mistake, but you just never know. Now, there's a, another change here. Castagna coming off. Ricardo Pereira coming on. Madison has continued to hobble down in front of us despite picking up an injury. And there is a feeling as if this game is just drifting to its conclusion now with six minutes of added time being allotted. But there's 10 at Goodison Park. Leicester champions in 2016. Champions League and Europa League campaigns have been often now it's going to be the championship for this club that gave everybody the chance to believe that their club anyone could win the top flight and one of the most amazing moments in Premier League if not the most amazing moment in Premier League history certainly in English football not just Premier League years when you think about the powerhouses of all the teams in the Premier League and little old Leicester came and just absolutely blitzed everybody That's the, I, I don't think of it that I can't think of a bigger story Madison goes down the right hand side tucked away by Emerson it's going to be a goal kick over away to our right hand side off to Goodison Park Matt Jones and there's a bit of a stoppage in play here again it's Everton 1 Bournemouth 0 Connor Cody has just made a terrific tackle on Dominic Solanke as it proved the offside flag had gone up anyway but in his follow through Solanke stood on Cody's ankle and he did uh, spend a little bit of time down injured he's up now and moving okay which is good news for Everton because they don't have to make any more subs but 90 seconds or so of the 10 minutes added on have already elapsed uh, no further chances but it is still very nervous here with the fans trying to just eke a little bit more energy out of their players Everton 1 Bournemouth 0 it is going to be a good day for Everton Calvert-Lewin's been injured he's never been able to get a run in the team Seamus Coleman was stretched off against Leicester here Patterson's had a hamstring injury Mikolenko's been out with a groin injury Godfrey and Davis injured as well they couldn't even fill their bench today and they had two goalkeepers on that bench the final financial situation at the club has been absolutely desperate and they started the day two points above the relegation zone midway through the first half they dropped into the relegation zone but now Everton Football Club look as if they are going to survive as long as they don't concede between now and the end of the game but here on the left hand side West Ham probing for an equaliser Ings into the penalty area comes back towards four nows and he just leathers it over the top of the crossbar but there's every danger that Leicester still might concede another one well we're talking about Everton might be dropping off being tired getting nervous but it looks like Leicester are a little bit as well West Ham not really sort of throwing everything at it but just stepping it up slightly and Leicester not able to handle it at the moment showing again the the vulnerability that defensively they've had all season well, that's the first time in 25 years that Everton will be fighting and have been fighting against relegation on the final day back then Howard Kendall was in charge they drew 1-1 against Coventry Bolton lost at Chelsea and Everton stayed up on goal difference they beat Wimbledon in 1994 to secure their own safety they needed an 81st minute winner from Graham Stewart that day today it's Abdullahi Decore that seems to be saving Everton from the drop a drop that they haven't experienced since 1951 and they're just minutes away now from securing that because Leicester even though they're leading here drop points at Newcastle on Monday and that stopped them from being within touching distance of Everton unless Everton dropped points today and they're not dropping points at this moment in time back there very shortly but the ball is wide on the left hand side the ball is picked up by Ricardo off Corne and then picked up by Samare uh, before it's hammered away by Madison Tielemans trying to get it clear but he looks cream cracker now can hardly raise a gallop 
as the ball goes back towards Declan Rice. Rice forward for Nows. Rice again. Rice playing the ball down the left-hand side, travelling at speed now. Moves towards the edge of the Leicester penalty area. He plays it into Emerson, back to Rice, and then on to Lanzini. The West Ham fans in fine voice, and they're just pushing the ball around Leicester, who are chasing shadows at this moment in time. Here is uh, Lanzini, on to Fornals, into the area. It's Emerson with a strike, blocked by Madison, who threw his body at it. Rice towards the left, and Corne in the wing position now. And there is almost hush around the King Power Stadium as the ball goes into the box because there is that tacit acceptance that the game is up. The ball is flicked towards this near side. It's headed away by Ricardo. There's a foul by Corne, and I think the offside flag was going to go up anyway. So let's go back to Matt Jones at Everton. And it's Everton 1, Bournemouth nil. Everton have just had a chance to make it 2-0. Decore must have carried the ball 50 or 60 yards before forcing a shot goalwards, which was saved to the near post by Travers at the other end. A terrific stop by Jordan Pickford. Vinia eyed the bottom corner from about 20 yards, but Pickford was equal to it, diving low to his left to beat that one away. We've had five and a half minutes of added time, so there's still four and a half plus whatever's going to be added on to come. Everton 1, Bournemouth nil. Lucas Moura's just scored a fourth goal for Tottenham on a day where Leeds had to win but haven't it's 4-1 to Tottenham at Ellen Road Leeds are down they are out of the Premier League for a seventh time they've been relegated from the top fly it's over and it could be over for Leicester City as well the full-time whistle blows here it's finished 2-1 and seven years after being crowned Premier League champions Leicester City's fall from grace is complete if Bournemouth don't get a late equaliser at Goodison Park. They'll be relegated to the championship after sleepwalking into a relegation battle that never appeared to realise they were in until it was far too late. The James Madison tweet that berated a journalist who had suggested that this could happen was indicative of an attitude that permeated the club. They thought they were too good to go down. They didn't realise they were in trouble and by the time they did, it was far too late. They've won here today, but it might not be enough. Here's Matt Jones at Goodison Park.